Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Community Board 1 is now called to order. Can I have the roll call, please? Jean Argento, Bogdan Bakarowski, Lisa Bamonte, Here. Louis Baricelli, Gina Barros, Moses Bondo, Eric Brzeidis, Tom Burrows, Phil Caponegro, Frank Carbone, Stephen Chesler, Michael Chiricella, Teresa Cinciata, Joshua Cohn, Arthur Dibinowski, T. Willis Elkins, Julia Amanda Forster, Samuel Francois, Chairperson Fuller, Emily Gallagher, Vincent Gangone, Joel Gross, Sonia Iglesia, Moisha Indig, Bozina Kaminsky, Ryan Coonan, Joel Landau, Marie Lianza, I got you, yeah. Giorgio Mayer, Aaron McCann, Trina McKeeva, Iris Manaya, Toby Boskowitz, Martin Needleman, Simon Newstein, Rabbi Niederman, Karen Nieves, Mary O'Domaruk, Rabbi Pearlstein, Janice Peterson, Isaac Sofer, Robert Solano, James Stewart, Del Teague, Tommy Tudes, Maria Vieta, Stephen Weidberg, Simon Weiser, Tessa Wilson, Lo Yo. Twenty-three members answering the call. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is our public session. We have an extensive agenda tonight. Tonight, we will start out going by the B room. Does everybody here know what the B room means? Those of you who do not know what the B room means, it means be brief, be bright, and be gone. We have an extensive agenda tonight. The first item on the agenda is an unenclosed uh, sideway cafe, 292 Bedford Avenue. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I have to back up. I need an approval of the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Against? Abstention? You against the agenda? We had a hearing, Marty. The hearing was not before the entire board. It was only a committee hearing. The board, the board was invited. The entire board was invited. We had it here last Tuesday. We did our due diligence. We had a public hearing. You may continue, sir. Thank you. Uh, my name is Michael Kelly, representing the applicant. This is a sidewalk cafe renewal application for Less Cyclists, LLC, doing business as Brasserie Whitloff. They are located at 292 Bedford Avenue at the corner of Bedford and Grand Street. They're renewing their sidewalk cafe license, which has nine tables and 23 seats and has operated for two years. All the tables and chairs are located on Grand Street. They use six feet of a 14 foot, four inch sidewalk, leaving eight feet, four inches clear. There are no obstructions in that eight foot, four inch clear path. We do comply with CB1's requested closing hours of 11 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Are there any questions? Yes. Marty. How have you dealt with, I just understand that there's been lots of complaints about the height uh, from the commercial property that causes lots of noise at the residential apartments, a lot of noise to the residential tenants at the building. How come you haven't dealt with that or It has to do with the restaurant? Yeah. Uh, that wasn't brought up to me by the owner. But I talked to him about it. Because it's a serious problem for the tenants in the building. Which building? Marty, what building? Uh, 292 South. Uh, what's it called? 292 Federal. Well, we'll have to come to the meeting. When is our meeting? I will bring the owner with me to the uh, training here. Are there any other questions? 
Seventy four, forty four, forty seven Java Street. How you doing, Andrew Caraballo, rep for the Naked Dog at forty seven Java Street? This is Cecilia Sotero, one of your owners. She has a partner, Akma, also. Uh, we're applying for a new unclosed sidewalk cafe. Uh, two tables and eight seats on Java Street and one table and two seats on West Street. Uh, the clearance to the curb on Java is eight feet, four and a quarter, for a total of 103 square feet. The hours are five to 11, Sunday through Thursday, 5 p.m. to 12, right? uh, And we have over 115 signatures from all the tenants upstairs, four of them. And It'll be a nice addition to the neighborhood. There's not too many uh, sidewalk cafes. They're up on Franklin Street. Any questions? Are there any questions? Uh, coming on February 20th, yes. Uh, June 20th, whatever month it is. June 20th, yes. Are there any other questions? I'll give them to you right now. this guy first. Are there any other questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is unenclosed uh, sidewalk cafe application, 114 Nassau Avenue. Is there anyone here to present on that item? My name is Vincent Milburn. I'm the owner of Greenpoint Fish and Lobster Company, uh, 114 Nassau Avenue uh, at Eckford Street. Currently have an unenclosed sidewalk license for 10 seats, five tables. We are seeking an amendment to increase it to 10 tables and 20 seats. Uh, we have a beer and wine license only. We're open seven days a week from 11 until 10 p.m. only. Yes. Are there any questions? Are there any other questions? How many seats are you adding? Ten, Ten seats. Did you get the information you needed, Tom? Yeah, he told me 10 more seats. It's like no space. Are there any other questions? Thank you, sir. Next item on the agenda is a sidewalk, uh, unenclosed sidewalk cafe application, 163 Hope Street. Hi, my name is Michael Kelly. With me is Dolores <laughs> Oget, one of the owners. This is a new sidewalk cafe application for 163. LLC, doing business as the Regal. We're located at 163 Hope Street between Union Avenue and Keep Street. We're in a one-story building and then have been open and operating since November of 2010. We're a full-service restaurant with a full kitchen. We have background music only. We're applying for 12 tables and 26 seats. We'll be using seven feet of a 15 leaving eight feet clear for pedestrians. There are no obstructions in front of the restaurant. 
We will comply with CB1's recommended closing hours of 11 p.m. Sunday through Thursday and 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Thank you. Are there any questions? What kind of photographs do I need? All of them. The same. What, what the kind one. of photographs do Up, I need? Up, down the block, everything around the block. Contextual, so yes, I know where I always it is. bring them. I, I learned that a long time ago. Signatures? Signatures, okay. photos. Are there, are there any other questions? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Next item on the agenda is Domino's flexible, flexible field. Hello, my name is Laura Chang. I'm here representing the applicant, developer, and owner of Domino Park Two Trees. Um, we have an application pending before the City Planning Commission for a small modification to our Domino Park design. I don't know how many people have, go by the park on a regular basis, but our construction is now well underway and the park is going to open next summer. As we began the process of being and selecting contractors to execute the construction, we were informed by all of them that our intention to build a flexible field out of... Excuse me, excuse me, miss, can you put the mic closer because yes. the people in the back can't hear you. Sorry. We were informed by all of the contractors we spoke to that building a flexible field out of the natural grass lawn, which was the original design intent, was a mistake. It was not going to be usable. Um, it was going to require a level of maintenance and never be able to perform the way we intended it to. We hope that that portion of the park is going to be very heavily used. We expect it to be very heavily used. It's meant to be an active play area. So our intention is to substitute the natural grass lawn in that one area of the park for, um, for synthetic turf, which is going to make it better looking, better performing, and be able to use for a much longer period throughout the year. There's a small other section of the park that we are also proposing to substitute synthetic turf for the natural grass lawn for a different reason. There is a playground in which we need to maintain a certain safety surface rating, a fall rating on the safety surface. This cannot be achieved with natural grass, but can be achieved with the synthetic lawn, so we will be proposing to do it there as well. I have boards. If anybody's interested in seeing those two areas of the park, I can point them out. I'm not sure how visible they are at this range. Tom. Phil, this, this domino park, when it's done, is it getting turned over to the right. parks department? No, we are going to maintain ownership and management of it. So how's the public going to have access? Sorry? How's the public it, getting access? It is, um, we're owning and maintaining it in, in, uh, under agreement with the parks department. It is being designed and will be operated in every way um, as a public space. I think our in design intent and the way we plan to manage it is that nobody who ever goes to that space will perceive themselves to be in anything other than a public park. Who's, but who's patrolling it and securing it? All of that are details to be worked out. We are responsible for the security. We are responsible for every aspect of the management of it. But again, we do so under a maintenance and operations agreement with the Parks Department. And the Parks Department um, has reviewed the design and all of the construction details, and they have approved those. Does this have to go before the Parks Committee? Because I'm concerned about a private security company securing a quasi-public park and deciding who gets to go there and who doesn't get to go there particularly the history of them, us versus them in this neighborhood about who goes to our parks and swimming pools. I would just say two things about that. Firstly, um, that again, our intention is to make this a very, very public space. But secondly, the matter that's before us tonight is just having to do with the AstroTurf. So we're certainly happy to answer those questions right, at, in a different a forum. You're making the AstroTurf because you want to have a flexible park, which I gather means it's not going to be for passive use for people playing, but it's going to be for concerts and art no, shows. And no, no. Here, actually, let me show you the plan. It will actually, I think, be very useful. This is the park. It is a total of six acres. The area that we're in it has many different, thank you, many different program areas. It's designed by James Corner Field Operations to have its most passive areas at the north of the park, the more active areas at the southern end of the park. The area that's under discussion right now is just this zone right here, flexible field. We still have lots of natural grass lawns because when people are just sitting on them, that's what they want is natural grass. However, if you're going to play a pickup soccer game, we know that the grass can't hold up to it. So it's just this zone here where we're proposing the artificial turf and this little zone here in the playground, which again, this is for a, for a safety surface rating that we need to achieve. And here it's because we just know that if we plant grass there, all we're ever going to do is fence it off and sod it and seed it and sod it and seed it and no one's going to be able to use it the way it was intended. Jan. Thank you. Why is that 
is it be staying as a private <laughs> home land instead of it becoming a public park? Why? Because what we was the reason behind the decision. Uh, we actually believe that we can run it even better than the parks department can. Um, you know, we have this, the, the park, the six acre park is part of an 11 acre development that Two Trees is undertaking that I think people are probably aware of, includes um, new residential and commercial buildings as well as the park proper. We have a very substantial investment in the whole community. We want the park to be as good as it possibly can be, can be and we believe that if we run it, it will be. Is this agreement forever or what is the time limit on Yeah, the agreement is forever. There are, there are um, you know, aspects. If, if we were to default on any of our obligations, if we do not manage or run the park the way that we're required, the Parks Department takes it over, which is why we have this agreement. Are there any other questions? It's Tommy. Good evening. Thank you for your presentation. Tommy Flores, I'm the Commissioner of the Local Williamsburg Sports Group. How are you going to allocate them out? How are we going to use these uh, in terms of permits, in terms of uh, use, usage? Well, the truth is that the park, and again, let me refer to the plan. It's a very substantial park. However, as you can see, maybe from there, um, it has a lot of different program areas. None of them are technical um, sports fields, right? We don't have a regulation size soccer field. We don't have a regulation size basketball uh, court. Um, we have lots of play active play areas. We have a volleyball court. Again, we have this flexible field because our hope and our intention is that people are going to use it in kind of an informal capacity and a pickup sort of pickup games. It's not an official size field, so I don't think it will be used by leagues. However, um, the truth is that w between now and when the park opens a year from now, a very substantial part of our work, in addition to the construction of the park, is working through all of those kind of operational questions. And throughout the Domino project, we have, um, I think, reached out to the community a lot for their help in figuring out how to run it. I think that's going to happen with the park, too. Tom? So you're saying you were just having, like, informal pickup games on that field. Mm -hmm. And the city park system is a permit process for you and guarantee fair use. And right. we've had an experience of like 90, 95% of our <coughs> minimal public park in this part of the town is being used by adult leagues and the kids are being left out in the cold. So right. how are you gonna make sure that kids that are coming over from Tommy's organization get to use that field and there aren't right. like 6,000 stick ball and dodgeball right. games going on there with red cups? Oh, and Again, what I'll say right now, and, and I, I don't want to um, suggest that I can answer all these questions tonight. As I said, over the course of the next year, in addition to building the park, we have lots of work to do to figure out exactly how we're going to run it and exactly how we're going to manage it. And I think all of those questions need to be addressed. But I would point out, um, again, none of these, the, the flexible field is not a regulation size field for anything. I think it's going to be far more informal. But again, you know, we, we, we fully uh, embrace the fact that there's lots of work to do on the kind of operations side of this. Are there any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Councilman Reynoso, would you like to speak now? Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's a very warm day, and it's good to be in this air-conditioned location. Uh, so we know that the seniors enjoy it. Uh, and uh, hopefully, after this budget, we've just found out that the money has officially been allocated by the city of New York to purchase the building. And I think we're like two. I want to say we're two weeks away from closing, but every time I say that, it adds another two weeks. So let's just say it should be in closing very soon, and we'll have a big party down here that you guys can all come to uh, to celebrate the victory of Saving 211. Um, I wanted to speak on an issue that's very important where we have a, a bunch of folks outside, um, and it's this uh, Pfizer development proposal. And I have a testimony. I made a testimony at the Department of City Planning, but I want to make another one here. And it's important that I read it out because the details and the information that need to go out um, need to be heard by this community board. So I want to thank uh, the chair uh, for allowing me the opportunity to speak. And I'm going to speak on RAPC Group's proposed development of the Pfizer site located at the Broadway Triangle. As you may know, during the scoping process for this project, I expressed solidarity with the Broadway Triangle Community Coalition in opposition. 
I testified to the Department of City Planning outlining my concerns about how this proposal perpetuates discrimination, uh, discriminatory development practices that have been an issue in the Broadway Triangle since the city's proposal in this, of this site in 2009. Now that we are considering Rapsky, Rapsky's group's proposal, uh, I see that nothing has changed since the scoping process. I continue to be opposed to this project and I'm here today to urge the board to vote no on this project and to send a message to the city that this community demands a community-based planning process for all remaining undeveloped sites in the area in order to ensure that federal fair housing requirements and community needs are met. As the board in, is in no doubt familiar, in 2009, the city rezoned the adjacent blocks of the Broadway Triangle, including both private and city-owned sites, from manufacturing to residential. The city's plan created with two organizations with no public bidding included low-rise buildings with large unit sizes, meaning that the number of affordable housing units was not maximized, and the planned affordable units would not be accessible to many of the smaller families in the surrounding communities of color of Winnersburg, Bushwick, and bed -Stuy. A coalition representing residents of these neighborhoods successfully sued the city over this plan for violation of federal fair housing regulations. The judge found that the city's plan would not only not foster integration of the neighborhood, but would perpetuate segregation on the Broadway Triangle. Despite ongoing negotiations with the city, the lawsuit has still yet to be settled. The lawsuit is still not settled. The court issued an injunction on the development of the two city-owned sites, yet development of privately-owned sites continues unabated. Despite the fact that my community has long been advocating that any settlement of the lawsuit include a commitment from the city to create a truly inclusive community-based plan for the entire Broadway Triangle area, instead the city is allowing this development to move forward with no meaningful public input. As I mentioned, I detailed my opposition to this project during the scoping hearing. I've attached the testimony for your review as all of my concerns expressed within remain unchanged. You will note that my testimony advocates for the following, none of which has been addressed by the environmental impact statement. Analysis scenario that includes manufacturing retention on site. The need to increase density in order to maximize the number of affordable housing units. Analysis of household size need based on a larger radius than one quarter mile in order to meet the needs of the surrounding community. Acknowledgement of a potential future scenario on the city-owned sites that may very well be different than the stalled, from the stalled plan pending the outcome of litigation. The necessity for a higher standard to be upheld regarding HUD's requirement to ensure non-discriminatory housing and equal housing opportunity based on the area's history. A mechanism of public oversight of open space to ensure that it will truly be open to the public and a plan to address the strain on public transit infrastructure. Even worse, the, uh, the study, the environmental impact study, has revealed even more issues. It shows an unaddressed impact for our local schools and potentially on traffic as well. How can we allow a developer to continue with a proposal that has no plan to address adverse impacts on our community that they admit will happen as a result of this project? The attached testimony also details an extent which Rapsky Group has failed to uphold commitments to the Bushwick community and has exhibited illegal and dangerous behavior at other developments they own in CB1 and elsewhere. I wish someone from Community Board 4 could be here to testify about the treatment that Rheingold site um, uh, has, uh, have, they have received from the Rheingold site and the Rapsky Group in the past. Despite these well-documented issues, the city continues to support them as they profit off of Brooklyn neighborhoods. Since I delivered my testimony in November 2016, Rasky Group has purchased development sites in Flatbush, downtown Brooklyn, Dumbo, and the Williamsburg waterfront. I honestly don't know why we continue to participate in this public review process if it's clear that everyone from the start, that our comments will go unaddressed and the community's voice will continue to be ignored. It is important to stress that we all want affordable housing. I feel strongly that when a site is rezoned from manufacturing to residential, the developer should be required to exceed the minimum MIH requirements because the value increase to the site created through the rezoning. Meaning if you go from manufacturing to residential, it's pennies on the dollar. You could give a lot back than just the bare minimum of affordable housing. For anyone who would criticize our attempt to stop a project that includes affordable housing, I would say that we don't have to accept a bad plan just because affordable units are included. We can do better, we can do more, and we can fight to make our voices heard and ensure that the community is part of the planning process. So I would like to encourage, again, everyone to vote no on this proposal. I would also make mention to the fact that the folks outside are 32BJ, 
who had an agreement to provide jobs, union jobs, on that site. And Rheingold and the Rafsky group have yet to fulfill even one job requirement for that group. I want to be clear that the people you're dealing with know exactly what they're doing, and they're not here for the public's interest. They're not here for your interest. So thank you uh, for allowing me to speak on that issue. And I have two more issues that I want to address very quickly. The Metropolitan Pool is an issue that is very important to many people here, especially Jan Peterson. I want to say that I've written a letter in support of making sure that we can allow for those hours, if in some cases to be extended, for women-only sessions. Uh, the second thing that I think is important is that uh, we engage with the mayor in a, in a real way. And any commitments made, he actually follows through with. But the third is that I am, I've been a part of these conversations with my staff, that I am the council that represents the metropolitan pool and the metropolitan area. And, and it's important to note that I wasn't there in the first day when the press conference happened and there were elected officials from other districts coming to this district trying to dictate what happens here. And those neighboring electeds need to know who is the representative of this district. And I would have loved to be a part of that conversation so we could have already had this resolved. So again, I'm gonna be very supportive of making sure we figure out a way to find a solution to that. The next thing is, uh, the Pod Hotel that is going up in Metropolitan and I want to say Roebling, Driggs, Metropolitan and Driggs. Um, the hotel is built. It is being built in and around majority residential district. We have to be very careful of what we're turning this community into, consistently allowing for these uses that just don't conform with the general public and what we're doing. We're talking about a hotel right next to residents, right next to residents. <laughs> While I, I would say that the conversations we're having with the people in the Pod Hotel are not negative conversations. I want to be clear that they are looking to sit with us and find solutions, but I cannot allow for a rooftop liquor license to go through if it means there'll be more noise for residents and if it means for an over-proliferation, again, consistently over-proliferation of bars and nightlife in areas that are residential. We just can't allow that to happen. So I'm also gonna encourage a no vote on the liquor license. Outside of that, I love you all very much. It's gonna be a hot summer. Ladies, enjoy the pool. Hopefully more exclusive hours will work that out. And don't let these developers come into our community and dictate how they think they should build. Let us make that decision. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Councilman Reynoso. You're quite welcome. The next item on the agenda is New York City Depart Department of Parks and Recreation update plan for LaGuardia Playground. Okay, uh, good evening everyone. Uh, my name is Emmanuel Thinge. I'm here with Tom Cirillo from Parks and representing LaGuardia Playground. Let's go on. And I'm sure most of you know the location on this. It's, can you hear me? Is it better now? Uh, the, the, the playground, uh, the, the LaGuardia project is at the uh, ent uh, ramp, entrance ramp to the Williamsburg Bridge. And it's a, it's a site that's separated, it's split by the, by the bridge. Uh, one, one portion is the playground, and on the other side is a more active recreation side where you have the basketball courts and other things. Cool. Now our goal, hello? Uh, our goal basically is sort of like to, en to enhance uh, the playground, the, the uh, playground features, uh, to sort of like uh, improve the environmental amenities of the site, given the location of the sites near the entrance to the Williamsburg Bridge. It was uh, one of our goals is sort of like to improve the, the, the sustainability aspect and the environmental aspect to improve the air quality and the biomass in, the, in, 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 in that location, and to provide more passive use of the site. Uh, the, the project is basically funded for $5.4 million, basically, and it also includes uh, uh, reconstruction of the, of the uh, bathrooms. Okay. 
Now you can see this is more of the existing conditions you have at the site. And it's basically the whole, uh, both sides, you can see the bridge splitting. Uh, you can see the bridge splitting the site into two sections. Uh, the playground and the more active on the other side where you have the basketball and the handball courts. It's basically all paved, uh, granite block, hardscape. And our goal again, like I said, is to improve uh, uh, the biomass of the, of, of the two sites. Now it is currently, uh, in terms of the site, we are basically, we had a, a, a meeting, a scope meeting, and our determination is that most of the existing condition and program that are on the site will, will remain, and we are adding uh, a fitness area to the active recreation lo uh, location. Now, just uh, as many of you might be aware, the corner of South 4th Street and uh, Havemeyer or Boenquin, uh it's sort of a dangerous corner. And fortunately for us, DOT ha has a project that's going to be sort of like working in tandem with our project, where they're going to be re uh, realigning, they're providing bikeway within that location, and they'll be providing crosswalk, which would be something that would be beneficial to our design, whereby you can connect the two sites in, in a more safe, uh, safe manner. So this plan, as a, uh, you know, it's currently in the works by DOT, and it definitely will be implemented as uh, uh, in, in, in conjunction with our, with our project. And just to go through the uh, basic uh, existing condition, you can see this is the plaza area. It's a nondescript plaza, no sense of direction. The trees are in pretty bad condition. Can go on to the next side. And again, more paved area within the basketball, and you can see granite block tree pit. Now that's the corner that I was talking about. Again, DOT is proposing that there'll be a crosswalk and they'll be redoing the sidewalk in, in, in that location. Now this, uh, along the perimeter edges, as again, as I was saying, you can see currently there's a lot of granite block, and again, our goal is to green up these, these, these edges, so that again, we are increasing the biomass. Now that particular park border along Boenquin Place, we are currently uh, in, in conversation with DOT to see if, what's that? I just wanna show that area, we'll be talking about that Right, right, that's what I'm, uh, so this area here, we are uh, in, in conversation with DOT currently to see if we can narrow the sidewalk that way we can enlarge the green strip uh, 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 border along that edge, especially since, keeps cutting up, uh, especially since it's close to the, uh, to the highway, that way we can provide green buffers. Okay. Again, you can see the existing condition, play equipment, not a lot of play value within it. Now we had, uh, you know, we had the uh, uh, culture division go and analyze the status of the tree. A lot of the trees are in bad condition, especially in the in the plaza location. A lot of the trees, and you can see what you see in the black X is tree that are condition based removal. They basically are in such bad shape, like we can't have them uh, uh, remain on the site. And then the red is sort of like the design based uh, removal that we are providing simply to make the circulation and, and the design we're proposing work better. And we'll be providing basically replacement trees, uh, especially along the plaza, approximately the same size. Uh, we did our analysis of the site, and again, basically, the spray shower, that's a one sunny spot we have within the playground will remain in that location. There's a lot of pores, a lot of entrances next to the comfort station, so a lot of uh, the public uses that, so our goal is sort of like to create a boundary between that public uh, use of the, of, the, of the playground area and the playground itself, so we want to provide a clear boundary. Uh, on the other side, uh, we want to direct the people along the plaza that's all along the street, sort of like direct the people toward the traffic, and that's what we'll, 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 our design, we'll guide our design. And, and, and basically, again, provide buffers where we need it. And basically, that's the proposed design. Uh, because the two sites are separated uh, by, uh, by, the, uh, ramp, uh, by the ramp, we are providing, we're making the concrete pavement sort of like the unified pavement that, that, that uh, connects the two sites. And then the crosswalk, again, once we have the crosswalk, that there'll be that strong connection. On the, on the uh, 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 active recreation side, again, we're keeping most of the, the existing uh, program, the handball court, the basketball court, these will all be redone. We are providing green buffers between the uh, you know, open spaces where it used to be granite block, we are making them green. Along the edge where you have the, a lot of uh, uh, pedestrian traffic that's happening, we are making a seamless transition from the plaza space into the, act, uh, into the active recreation so that it feels that it's one park happening all the way to the, uh, to the street edge. So that, that color, that light color pavement that you see is a way of directing the traffic that goes toward the, uh, toward the crosswalk. Meanwhile, you'll have a seating area 
uh, where you see the darker pavement that's sort of nestled within uh, 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 planting, planting bed. So you feel like you are not in the, in the actual traffic, but there's a sit. At these locations, we basically will have uh, game tables with, uh, with seating. Once you go into the park section, and, and right adjacent to it, uh, we are also working with the green infrastructure uh, uh, sec division of, of, of DEP uh, to provide some sustainability aspect. As you know, the EP, we have to do a lot of water reclamation simply not to overload the sewer system that's in the city. So some of the uh, rain water that's coming from the street will be uh, integrated into the rain gardens that we'll be providing and, and they'll be planting. So it'll be a nice pleasant space within the seating area that we will have a, a you know, rain garden and a lot of trees. Uh, on, the other, on the other side, on the playground side, we are using, and as you can see, we're using the pavement to sort of like draw people in. The pavement that's within the park goes out all, all the way into the sidewalk. And the same thing happens on the active recreation side. Within, around the building will be more the, the public sitting area. We are providing a, a, a large planting buffer that's sort of separating the two spaces where the playground itself, when people bring their kids, will have a lush, surrounded by greenscape within that space. We are providing an extensive 5 to 12 play area, uh, as you can see, along the edge of South Street. And then you have the smaller unit for the 2 to 5. Uh, now, the spray shower is sort of like the, the gateway from the public uh, section going into the playground. And that, that spray shower, you can see that's that circle that's in the, in the middle. Along the outer edges, all of the granite block that used to be there will be removed and it'll become planting beds so that we have a large biomass of planting around it. And as you can see in the general, uh, from what you had before, which was all paved, now there's a lot of greenscape that's happening. Uh, and, and along this edge, uh, we will we'll have a lot of, uh, along the edge we'll have the high buffer, uh, will, will be high shrubs uh, that sort of like buffer you from the, from the highway. Uh, next. And this was something that we had discussed when we presented the, uh, the park originally. There was some uh, discussion that the, the buffer that we had previously on the, uh, on the pre previous schematic design was too narrow. And it was seven feet before. So what we've done is, again, we've, we've sent the drawing to DOT and we're talking about expanding uh, that, that buffer, widening it by uh, uh, three foot, three and a half feet, and uh, making the sidewalk narrower so that we have a more of a green biomass along this edge uh, as, as, as requested by the, by the public. And that just shows a general section cutting through the site. And that's the fitness area. Again, we'll, we'll, you know, it will accommodate some uh, uh, of the fitness equipment as part of the active recreation. That's one more program we will have there. And you can see along the, uh, the, the ramp will be, we'll have a, a green edge also. That, that's some, so, sort of the, the kind of equipment we'll be having at that location. And that's the spray shower itself. The spray shower will have a seat wall and also benches. And then it'll have basically a special pavement, uh, an interesting pavement at that location with ground sprays. And right, right adjacent to it, sort of like where you'll have the small kids area, sort of like uh, against the edge where you have the highway, we'll, we'll have the tots and the set of uh, musical instruments. This is just pictures of the play equipment. The two to five unit is ADA accessible all the way through. And the, 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 uh, the 5 to 12 is a little more expensive. There's a lot of climbing and a large variety. And you can see simply from the size of what we're providing, it's sort of like even, I would say, it's been tripled in the amount of play value that we're providing. And these are just the special pavement that we're using throughout. Instead of currently, it's basically granite block and asphalt. And we are providing special pavement, basically, just to make the, the, the playground itself more special. And these are the, uh, the furnishing element that we'll have throughout the side. The game table, again, in the seating area, that's along where the plaza currently exists. Right adjacent, and we have some tables and chairs that are right next to a couple of tables and chairs that are right next to the handle court. And, and this is just the palette of what we'll be providing as the site furnishing. And in terms of the planting, again, what you see in the, in the sort of like uh, along the highway is basically we'll have high shrub wherever we, we want to sort of screen out the the, the highway edge, and then there'll be more low planting for visibility within the playground itself in other location. And you can see the rain garden along the edge that's, uh, that will be accommodating the water that's coming from Havamaya Street. And some of the palette of planting we'll be providing. Uh, the, 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 the Galicia Tricanthus you see will basically want to be one of the main plaza planting because it's sort of off a filtered light without so that you'd have the tables and chairs and filtered light. And more the palette of what we're using, low planting with some high shrubs. Fencing, 
we're, you know, basically we're providing the four foot fencing around the, the playground area. And again, for the sports court, the required fencing, 16 foot fencing around the handball court and 12 foot separation between the basketball court and on the outer perimeter. And that's basically it. It's just open the question. Are there any questions? What's that? When is it getting built? Well, wait, 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 wait. Did the chair acknowledge it? I'm sorry, Madam Chair. Thank you. Well, we, 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 we presented it to them, and I think they'll be amenable to it. There's, you know, currently there. We are, sort of the city itself has been, been in more cooperating with DOT and having these kind of design in the suite. So we think it will happen, but if, it's, if they don't agree to it, we'll come back in and form you of that. But we, we have presented it to them, and sort of bringing it to the chain of command to make a decision. You know, Chair Chalo. Uh, what's that? I'm sorry, Madam Chair. My, my question was answered by, by whoever asked that question. I mm -hmm. Marty. What is this? Where is the, uh, the parking lot from uh, Peter Lugers in relation to that property? What's that? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know where Oh, my God. Uh, it's so far away from there. Oh, oh. <laughs> Yes. Marty, it's Rare from El Tom, somebody speaking. Thank you. Well, we had a we had the scope meeting in October of last year, I believe October of last year. So that's how long we've been working as a project that he's been assigned to us. I don't know if it's been in, in conversation way before that, but, uh, but as far as uh, the scope meeting that sort of determine what the project will be happen in October. And, and we are currently in the working, working out the schematic to, to start. Uh, uh, once the, the schematic is approved, then we'll start the contract drawing process. So we're in the, it's, gonna, it's gonna happen fast. I think that I think to a meeting maybe five, seven years ago, with Yana Reina. I'm not aware of that, so I, I don't know. Yes, Yana Reina, you wanna come to the meeting? Yes, Yana Reina, you wanna come to the meeting? She was saying that she, she, she's been in a meeting five or seven years ago regarding this project. Are there any other questions? No questions? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, Office of Citywide Health Insurance Asset at NYC Human Services. Is there anybody here to present on that item? Going once, going twice. Next item on the agenda is energy program, neighborhood free LED, LED light bulbs exchange program. Thank you. Hey, thank you for having me. Andy Brecky. I am the program manager for the Con Edison neighborhood program. Con Edison is offering free LED, light emitting diode, uh, light bulbs to the, to the Brooklyn neighborhood. If not, so for you. I think you have to stay in a certain spot for the mic to work. Is that we're what having, it is? We're having That's technical right. difficulties tonight. Where's the antenna? It's in the sweet spot? Okay. Hey, this is pretty good, right? Yeah, it seemed to work, right? Hey, guys. Um, so long story short, Con Edison has energy saving solutions to save the neighborhoods uh, from suffering through brownouts and blackouts in the summertime. Um, that's what demand side energy management programs are designed to do. Um, in this case, residential units are getting free light bulbs. So it's a program to exchange old technologies, get them out, and put LEDs in. Okay? So I can give you contact information so that you can call and schedule your own appointment, or you can sign up directly with me. Um, yeah, well, we gotta do the work. We gotta verify that the work is actually done. 
Um, however, if you are leader of an organization or a synagogue or a church, other um, groups with memberships, please spread this word throughout your organizations. Let them know um, that this program exists. Word of mouth is the best way to keep these programs going and make them successful. But as far as tonight goes, I suppose, and anybody can direct me what the best way to do it is, I can hand out flyers and I can also collect names. Uh, just hand out the flyers and use your phone number on the flyer. Yep. But just, uh, just go around to the tables quietly and put the flyers on the table and people can contact you by phone. Yep, you got it. Appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you so much. I understand that Councilman Levin is here. Oh, you have a speech? I mean, you have a question? Yeah. I just had a quick question. If you could give a stat about how efficient these are and why they're being used. 85% more efficient than the existing incandescents in your home. They last 25 years. They're under warranty. Sofa. Yes, sir. The lighting is the same as it used to be? Same as the incandescent, that 2,700K. Um, just my personal experience, it, it is, I'm not sure it's exactly the same, but in the few years, all those other batteries doesn't give the same lighting as Yeah, the best thing to do is just try it out, honestly. Put it in to make the comparison for yourself. Are there any other questions? Can you explain the the perks of the lighting? Sure, here's a good uh, summertime equation. They're cooler. The incandescents, they were 60 watts, right? We put in nine watt, so automatically it's gonna be cooler in the summertime in your home. They Are last 25 years. Are there any other questions? M Marty? You have to change the base? No, it's standard Edison base. We also do candelabras, so for uh, chandeliers. Uh, and they're dimmer compatible. There's a lot of attributes. Teresa? Uh, I've got samples to show, not to give out. Yeah, I'll show you. I'll bring one around. Are there any other questions? Are there any other questions? I appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilman Levine. Thank you very much, uh, Chair Fuller and, uh, and Jerry and to the whole board. Hi, everybody. So I... Um, I don't want to take up too much of your time. I want to wish everybody, you know, happy summer, and I look forward to uh, to seeing you guys all in the fall. Uh, we passed a very good budget th uh, this uh, past week at the New York City Council on a lot of important things that we all care about, like uh, supporting senior citizens, uh, like supporting uh, our, our youth in foster care, uh, supporting uh, child protective services out of the committee that I chair, which is general welfare, supporting open space, including the allocation of uh, $160 million to acquire Bushwick Inlet Park. Bushwick Inlet Park, so it's very exciting. Um, uh, two issues very quickly I would like to address. One, um, I see that- Excuse me, Steve, Sofa. We cannot have two meetings. If you need to talk to the gentleman about light bulbs, please step outside. Uh, one issue I see that there are some metropolitan uh, users that are here. Um, so I just want to let you all know that I am, I am in uh, total favor of reverting back to the original hours of metropolitan pool. Um, I think that that is absolutely the right thing to do. Uh, there was no reason, w the, in my, uh, in, in, through some uh, questions that I've asked, I've, I've, I haven't been able to um, identify that the Parks Department asked to go uh, back to the original hours. They only asked to do half the hours. Um, so there's no uh, reason to think that that, that that waiver wouldn't have been granted by the Human Rights Commission. I think that it's important and valuable um, amenity for uh, women uh, of all uh, creeds and, uh, and religions, races, um, I think it's a very important thing um, to be doing. So that's, that's on that issue. Uh, with regard to the Pfizer uh, project you all are voting on, um, so uh, this is in the 33rd Council District, which I represent. Um, you know, it, doesn't, it, it hasn't come to the council yet, so it, you know, as you know, uh, we all have our really important roles in the process. We're here at the community board today, then on to the borough president, then on to the city planning commission, and then uh, over to the council. So I'm not really here to tell you how to vote, um, 
But what I would say is that uh, this project, uh, for one thing, there has not been, I think this is an important thing to note, there's not been any affordable housing that has been built south of Broadway in Community Board 1 in a very, very long time. And this is uh, one uh, project that is proposing, I think it's about 250 units of affordable housing um, as part of the mandatory inclusionary housing program, which I supported at the city council. I voted in favor of mandatory inclusionary housing, which means that there's gonna be 25 percent um, uh, of the units at 60% of AMI or lower with another set aside for uh, some units at 40% uh, at AMI, which is, that's reaching people that truly, truly need affordable housing. So I will say that, um, you know, I'm, I haven't seen every uh, uh, last detail of the project, and so, you know, there are going to still be things that we need to talk about as a community, and so I, I think that this is the right process to do that through the ULER process with comments from the community board, with comments from the borough president, um, and that's, that's the process that we have in the ULER process. But um, you know, I do think it's important to make sure that we know what it is that we're voting on. So this is um, a project that has uh, uh, three different um, zoning designations, an R8A uh, and, uh, along Union Avenue, an R7D along the middle, and an R7A um, along, I think it's Wallabout Street. And uh, uh, R8A is a very dense, um, is, is pretty dense by any standard. Uh, you know, we, throughout the, a lot of Williamsburg Greenpoint, um, you know, we have R6A, we have some R7A. Um, this, because it's down uh, at Union Avenue where it's, it's fairly wide streets, um, that's why they're proposing an R8A there. So that's going to accommodate a lot of housing. This is going to be 777 units. Um, and I think that that probably is the right zoning designation. Um, that probably makes the most sense um, to achieve the, uh, the outcomes, you know, the, the objectives that we want to achieve in terms of affordable housing. Um, so, you know, again, I'm not, I'm not here to tell you, you know, you know, you should vote one way or another. Um, and there, there needs to be a process, but I want to make sure that you know, we're all clear that this is a, a proposal that is a private proposal. This isn't, this isn't uh, the Rheingold proposal. This isn't the Broadway Triangle proposal. This is this proposal, and I think it needs to be um, looked at on the merit of the specifics of the proposal um, with, uh, you know, and, and, the, de and the, you know, the details that, that, uh, that a careful consideration uh, should afford it. So um, with that, Again, I want to wish you all a very happy summer, and I look forward to seeing you on the fall. Oh, Thanks. Baby's, baby's great. So hopefully, I'll be bringing the baby around. She's Francis. She's four months right now. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you very much. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Next item on the agenda is Rose Plaza on the River, second renewal of a special permit. Good evening, everybody. My name is Hilary Aspot, and I'm from the law firm of David Off Hutcher and Citron. And my firm represents the property owner of the Rose Plaza site at 470 Kent Avenue. Um, as you may recall, my firm was here about seven years ago for the um, initial rezoning process for this project, and approximately uh, four years ago for the first renewal of the special permit and, um, the, and authorization. Uh, this proposal would allow for the creation of approximately 800 units of housing in three buildings, with 30% of that housing being affordable, and there have been no changes since the um, original application or the first renewal. This is the final renewal for three years. Um, and again, there are no changes. The only thing that has changed in the application documents are the zoning sections, which have been modified because of um, the recently adopted ZQA and MIH. So the sections have changed, but the projects have not changed. Are there any questions? Um, it, Division Street and Kent Avenue. Are there any other questions? Is the, is the 
Um, I thought we might want to get together this evening and if we can, if the committee can come up with a, a quick vote, uh, then we could present it tonight and then not have to meet in uh, July. I'm sorry, Division uh, um, I have a question. In the approval that you received, were there conditions that you had to meet? It, community. In the community Department. board's approval, yes. Um, I would have to check on that. I can I can check on that with my boss right away. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Are there any other? Steve? Yeah. Oh, what's comment period? What's, what's the uh, time period? Comment period is what? Um, I believe it's 45 days from the time the community board received it. And just so that the, the community board sort of knows where we were in this process, we were told uh, originally, we were told originally by city planning that this was referred out um, end of April. So we had checked with the community board. The board said that they hadn't received it. Um, we followed up with city planning and they said that it would be on the agenda for tonight, that it got referred out later than, than anticipated. So we wanted to come to you before the summer so that there was the opportunity for comment on it. Trina. Go ahead. We, we did not receive any, any notice of that actually at all. I, I was informed yesterday about the meeting tonight. Pardon me? They went out by email today. Okay. Do you have any other documents you want to present? No, just the application that was, um, was submitted to the Department of City Planning. Okay. Are there any other questions? Thank you. Liquor license. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our public session. We will now have a moment of silence and then we will go into our board meeting. Thank you. Can I have the roll call, please? <coughs> Gina Argento, Bogdan Bakarowski, yeah. Lisa Bamonte, yeah. Louis Baricelli, Gina Barros, yeah. Moses Bondo, yeah. Eric Berzaitis, yeah. Tom Burrows, yeah. Phil Caponegro, Frank Carbone, S Stephen Chesler, yep. Michael Chiricella, yeah. Teresa Cinciata, yeah. Joshua Cohn, Arthur Dibanowski, yeah. T. Willis Elkins, yeah. Julia Amanda Foster, yeah. Samuel Francois, yeah. Chairperson Fuller, yeah. Emily Gallagher, yeah. Vincent Gangone, yeah. Joel Gross, Sonia Iglesia, yeah. Moisha Indig, Bozina Kaminsky, yeah. Ryan Coonan, Yoel Landau, Marie Lianza, Giorgio Mayer, Aaron McCann, Trina McKeever, Iris Manaya, Toby Moskowitz, Martin Needleman, Simon Neustein, Rabbi Niederman, Karen Nieves, Mary O'Damarak, Rabbi Pearlstein, Janice Peterson, Isaac Sofer, Robert Solano, James Stewart, Del Teague, Tommy Torres, Maria Vieta, Stephen Weidberg, yeah. Simon Weiser, yeah. Tessa Wilson, yeah. Low Yole.
37 members answering the call. Thank you. The ne Hopefully we can hold that. <laughs> Uh, next item on the agenda is affirmation of new members. With uh, new uh, new members, please come forward. Louis Barrichelli, <laughs> Steph Stephen Chesler, Emily Gallagher, Lo Yo. We're missing two people. <laughs> Please repeat after me. I solemnly affirm to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. I solemnly affirm, affirm, affirm to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the State of New York. The Constitution of the State of New York. The Charter of the New York of New York City. The Charter of New York City. And the bylaws of Community Board One. Community Board One. Thank you so much and welcome to come. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Can I have a approval of the agenda? Rabbi Needleman. Okay, Marty. I'm proposing that we allow the comments on the Pfizer rezoning to be heard before a vote on the, on the committee report. I don't think it'll be harmful. I think it's helpful to get to hear people before you vote as opposed to I don't. Th I don't think people can hear what you're saying, Marty. So what I was saying is, I was proposing that. We make sure that we allow people to comment on the Pfizer proposal prior to the committee's re uh, recommendation and vote on the committee report. Otherwise, we're commenting after the fact, and it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit unfunctional. Trina? I think in general, the public session should be before the committee reports so that the public can, yeah. can speak before committees vote. We are. No, no, no. no it should be shifted. We, we've been through this. Yep. We've been through this. Our gender is set up the same way this month that it was set up last month. I didn't see it. What we're trying to do is we change the agenda because by the time we get to uh, committee reports, we lose our quorum. We had to change. We had to change our agenda so we can get the board's business done. And that's why we change. We have to get the board business done. Just like, just like tonight, we got two members, new members, started out on the right foot, didn't show up. I'm aware of that. I'm aware of that. But the executive board changes the agenda. I'm explaining why we change the agenda. We have changed the agenda because when we get to committee reports, there is no, there's no quorum. Rabbi Needleman. I think we, sh we shouldn't lose time in deliberating this because it pushes off moving the agenda. And plus, there has been ample public hearing of people. The, the project was presented to the board three different times. The project was presented three different times to the board, so it makes no sense go through this whole thing again. It was ample, ample time to have done that. Have people comment anyhow, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna be it's so just, if the question is before or after, that's gonna be it's it's the same amount of time. So it's gonna be but a, so the thing here is Marty wants to make a, 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 a motion. A motion. A motion. The thing exactly. about it, we hey. the community board didn't do anything. Everything is what? transparent. We had the committee hearing, we had the public session, and we had the committee vote again. Did my board members, my executive board members had four meetings last week. week in order to get this on their, you know, on their agenda and do it the proper way. Those who chose not to show up, that is their business. We put it out there, we advertised it, and we had the space here. They were invited. Every board member was invited, every constituent was invited. We did what we supposed to do, so why should we keep backtracking? Do you have a second to your motion? Thank you. The only, the only question is before or after, that's all, because we have people again in the got a second so, right behind you. Hello. Just keep moving. No, we have to keep moving. So, Jerry, Jerry.
Secretary, if it's more appropriate, I'll make a motion. I'll make, I'll, I'll request that we, we reject the agenda as proven, but it's a friendly amendment to at least vote on it. But how would you want to deal with it? But I'd like to say something. We had, we had a public hearing this week. We had a land use committee meeting. Then we had, at, at which time people were allowed to speak about the Pfizer project. Then we had a full public hearing at which time people were invited to come. And then we had another committee meeting after that to, uh, to uh, establish our vote, the, com the committee's vote, and the public was allowed to be there. Now, if we're not going, if that's not going to be sufficient, then what was the point of our having a public hearing? What is the point? The answer is that we have 37 board members here today had how many at the, in those meetings? So here, here is an opportunity for the entire board to be here. But secondly, secondly, we're not going to lose any time other than this conversation because it's going to be heard before or after. The point is, why have people discuss this after as opposed to before the vote? So let the whole board hear it. Then there's no point. There was absolutely no point in our having that special public hearing, reserving the space, having people come, having it advertised. What is the point? There has to be some kind of a, a decorum here so that the members of this community board have some, some finality to what they do. We had a public hearing and everyone, everyone was, in, was invited to come and give their, their opinion, opposition, in favor, whatever. Here. here we have an opportunity for the whole board to hear it at least. And, and secondly, the process is required. That's the other process. And the committee has to make recommendations to the board. It's not a final, the committee does not have the final vote. Marty, 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 Marty. The, the board members had the opportunity to come out last week. They chose not to. They chose not to. So it makes a farce out of the fact that we put in all that this time this week to have the, the, these public hearings and to have all of these meetings to allow the community, to allow all the community board members to come and participate. It makes a farce of the whole thing if we don't stand with that and, and just move ahead. That's my opinion. Yeah. I won't repeat myself. Okay. That's yes. I have, a, I have a question. How many people who signed up to speak are planning to speak on the Pfizer? We have no idea at this time. We have no idea at this time. What's, what's going on is, is that Marty wants to make an, a change to the agenda, whereas we have our public hearing after the committee report. He wants to do the hearing before the committee report to give co reports so the uh, community will have an uh, opportunity to speak. And what we're saying is we had a meeting last week. We had a public hearing where the public could come and give their opposition in favor, whatever. They didn't, the people that were here, we heard them. Any board member can propose a change to the structure of the community board meetings? Yes. He's making a motion to change the agenda. I second it. Yes. And basically, we are going to change something that we have going on for so long. And we're going to change it. If we start with a public comment, we change the process that we have all the time. I think I think what Marty is asking is for us to make an exception to uh, an exception tonight. Why? Why? We should make it all the time. I mean, the fact that we just said it. So, okay, okay. This, this, that, let, let me let me just say this. Let me just say this. The executive board sets the agenda. The vote. The you the. The executive board voted unanimous on this agenda. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go with this agenda. Point of order. Point of order.
membership as a whole can reverse decisions made by the executive committee right. in terms of things like this. So it's not like the final final decision shut up. Really? The, the board has a right to vote, vote it up or down. What's up here? What? No, I want to have a vote on it. And I second his motion. to the charter, the bylaws, and everything, and what everybody else wants. The vote. If you vote yes, it's a yes. If you vote no, it's a no. If you abstain, it get counted as a no vote. Is everybody clear on the voting process? Yes. Yes. And please explain the vote, I think. How what the vote is? We just we got we got our vote overturned by the part by the part hotel from the legal at Borough Hall, and what they did was they turned down our vote because with the abstentions and the no's, they were counted together. Therefore, it was. We lost the vote. It's not a majority. It doesn't mean that they voted no. It means it's just oh. Right. When you add the abstentions to the, to the no's, to the yeses, then you got, you know. But if you have a majority of yeses, even if any. Marty, Marty, okay. If you, Marty, listen up. A yes, a no, of an abstention. A yes vote and abstention get, um, abstention get counted as a no vote. So if you vote yes, it's yes. If you vote no, it's no. If you vote to, if you're abstaining, it gets out counted as a no vote. Is that clear? Yes. 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 Roll call vote, please. Gina Argento. Bogdan Pakarowski. Yes. Lisa Bamonte. Yes. Louis Baroselli. Gina Barros. No. Moses Bondo. Eric Presidis. Aye. I can't hear you, I'm sorry. Yes. Tom Burroughs. Yes. Phil Caponegro. Yes. Frank Carbone. Yes. Stephen Chesler. Yes. Michael Chiricella. Yes. Teresa Cinciata. Yes. Joshua Cohn. Arthur Dibinowski. T. Willis Elkins. Yes. 
Julia Amanda Foster. Yes. Samuel Francois. No. Emily Gallagher. Yes. Vincent Gangone. Yes. Joel Gross. No. Sonia Iglesia. No. Moisha Indig. No. Bozina Kaminsky. No. Ryan Coonan. Yes. Joel Landau. Yes. Marie Lianza. Yes. Giorgio Mayer. Aaron McCann. Aaron McCann? No. Trina McKeever. Yes. Iris Manaya. Yes. Toby Moskowitz. No. Martin Needleman. No. Yes. Simon Newstein. No. Rabbi Niederman. No. Karen Nieves. Mary O'Domerick. No. Yes. Rabbi Pearlstein. Janice Peterson. Here. What's your vote? What's your vote? Janice Peterson, are you voting? Yes. She said yes. She said yes. Michael Isaac No. Robert Solano. James Stewart. Del Teague. Tommy Torres. Maria Vieta. Stephen Weidberg, no. Simon Weiser, no. Tessa Wilson, yes. Low Yo, no. it's not okay. It's too late. 18 yes, 21 no, motion fails. And ladies and gentlemen, the motion fail. Can I have approval of the minutes, please? Motion to approve. Rabbi Niederman, Captain Negro, all in favor? Aye. Against? Abstentions? Motion carried. Committee reports. Parks and waterfront. Good evening, everybody. You all saw the presentation for LaGuardia Playgrounds. Thank you very much, Mr. Chiricella. Uh, we did not have a quorum, but the consensus of the committee members present was to support the plan. And as you saw, we would. We are also going to send a letter to MIT. We want that guardrail moved closer to the curb so we could green that area up further. And that is uh, our proposal. Second. You get a second, Rabbi Niederman. All in favor? Against? Abstentions? Motion carried. SLA, Tom Burroughs. It says Tom Burroughs. Okay, good evening. SLA had a meeting on. Check, check. Okay, check, check, check. Okay, good evening again. Um, the SLA and uh, DCA excuse me, committee excuse me, had a meeting. Uh, Bogdan, I have, a, I have a list that you filled out a form and Tom filled out a form yeah, for right, SLA. Right, right. So there's only one report. That's correct. Thank you. 
Yes, there's only one co report, yes, again. The SLA DCA committee, we held the meeting on the May 22nd. And item number first, sidewalk cafe, we had four application and uh, four application was approved by the committee. Can I have a vote on that? First. Motion to All in favor? Aye. Against? Abstention? Motion carried. Thank you. Yes. That's w item number two. That was uh, covered license. That was for Avant Garden LLC, and they did not appear. And before the committee vote against the leaking license, and this we voted no to deny the application. Item number two for the Avant Garden uh, LLC. Can I have the vote, please? Uh, Gina, uh, Rosina, all in favor? Aye. Against? Abstention? Motion carried. Thank you. Item number three, new leaking license. We had altogether 12 application, 12, eight, 11 of those application was approved by the committee one is here, right? and application was because the applicant did not show for review there's application. So our recommendation was for the okay and for one application no. Vote on item number three, new leaking licenses. Is there a second? second? Tom. All in favor? Aye. Against? No. No. Abstention? One no. Motion carried. Thank you. Next item that was renewal application or renewal application, as you can see on the report, was okay by the committee to approve. Can I have the vote or all renewal application for leaking license? Mayor, second, Iris, Rab, you second it? No, Rab, I need them. All in favor? Aye. Against? Abstention? Motion carried. Thank you. Item number four, previously postponed items. That was uh, previously postponed items, all of them. Just one item is okay by the committee, and nine applicants previously postponed were postponed by the application, and um, by the applicant to postpone again. So, item number four, can I have a vote on one application okay and nine to postpone again? Are these all renewals? That's Th that's that's the previously postponed application. No, that was new. New application. New application was altogether ten application. Nine of them were postponed before and were postponed again. Only from those ten, one application was approved by the committee. And the additional nine was postponed again by the applicant. So I would like to have a vote to postpone again for nine application and one application to approve. Simon and Gross, all in favor? Aye. Thank you. Against? Abstentions? Motion carried. Thank you very much. That would um, summarize my report. And uh, next. SLA and DCA committee meeting is on June 20th. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, budget, Stephen Weidberg. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, the district needs report for 2019 was prepared by the budget committee, the board office, and input from some members. You all had an email to you today. I hope you read all 47 pages. Um, I need a motion tonight to approve it. Dale, Chiricello, all in favor? Aye. 
Against, abstentions, motion carried. Thank you. Transportation, Vincent Gangong. Good evening. Uh, on June 8th, we had a meeting at the board office uh, for the Transportation Committee. And on the agenda, the first one, we have an update of the L train Canasi tunnel reconstruction. The expected time frame has been revised from 18 months to now 15 months. So we're lowering that. The start time would also be Gang on. Can I, can I ask you to let me do land use now? Because I go by how the forms are handed in. So let's let land use go because they have the caucus. Absolutely. Thank you. You want Trina to go first? Okay. Uh, Trina, you, want, you got a, a landmark item? There's one landmark building in the Greenpoint Historic District. It's a mixed four-story building that's in a row of similar buildings on Greenpoint Avenue. And the owner has, has it's between Franklin and uh, Manhattan. And the owner has already renovated the apartments and there, he's before landmarks um, for the windows and the storefront as well as a rear extension. The storefront matches that he's proposing matches the 1940s or 30s tax pictures and that didn't seem to have a problem. The rear extension is as of right and so the committee didn't have a problem with that either. But the, what the committee did take issue is with the windows that they're proposing to put, that just that they're painted white as you can see in the picture here. What the committee would like to do is, is to approve the, the storefront and the rear extension and recommend that the windows that are being proposed be painted a dark color, either dark black or dark brown. Can we have a motion? Okay. <laughs> Dell uh, uh, Bogdan, all in favor? Aye. Against? Abstentions? Motion carried. Thank you. Land use, Dell. Okay, good evening. Just before I get started, let me just uh, say that as soon as I'm finished here, uh, I will caucus with the whole commi committee, the Land Use Committee, on Rose Plaza so that we can allow the whole board to vote tonight. Otherwise, we'll have to come back and vote in July. So we had... <laughs> All right, so I think it, it should be fine. So anyway, um, we had a regular Land Use Committee, and then I'll, I'll address that first. That was on June 5th. And the, the first application was an, uh, uh, an application to build a seven-story mixed residential community facility which will house a synagogue. And as is more fully put in the report, the, um, the waiver is to accommodate the uh, separate sections that are needed by the men and the women, so they need a, uh, an increased ceiling height. The um, interesting thing is that the waiver for the uh, encroachment is not actually needed on the first floor. That's actually as of right. It's only going out on the second floor. So the, um, and, and I will just mention uh, that the neighbors on both sides of the site have submitted uh, letters of, of support. The committee voted unanimously to approve the application. Okay, so we need a vote. Uh, Rabbi Needham is second. Chelo Chello, Chello. All in favor? Aye. Against? Abstention? Motion carried. Okay. Um, the next application was to an extend a variance for uh, a restaurant that we had already given approval for. Uh, and the only reason they have to come back is that the uh, the variances are time limited. So the first, we, 20 years ago they were, they were approved and uh, now they have to come back for uh, a second uh, approval for another extension. And uh, at this point the, um, the maximum amount has been reduced from 20 years to 10 years. The committee was not aware of any complaints or problems associated with the restaurant and so accordingly the committee voted unanimously to approve uh, the 10 year extension. 
The address is 173 Kingsland Avenue, um, AKA 635 Meeker Avenue. It's Nina's restaurant. Simon? Gross, all in favor? Aye. Against? Abstentions? Motion carried. Okay, there was a, um, a, a brief presentation by uh, Brian Brown, Jr., uh, an, an organizer of the SEIU local uh, 32BJ uh, unit, un union uh, in opposition to the Pfizer. Uh, his, he raised concerns about um, prevailing wages, uh, whether the uh, developer would uh, adhere to safety standards, and uh, complained that the developer did not um, ab abide by an agreement that was made uh, with the Rheingold project by a previous owner. However, the, um, the speaker confirmed that the agreement was not binding on this developer. Um, anyway, the, um, the presentation was made. We didn't have to vote on it. That'll, we'll, we can discuss more in the, when I uh, go through the public hearing. Now, you heard tonight about the Domino project, and we need a vote on it. This is, the, they, they, they um, presented to you earlier about wanting to use synthetic turf in the flexible field, which is a playing field um, for diverse activities, and in a small patch of lawn in the playground because, the, um, because they need to have uh, an increased safety uh, rating. So the, the, uh, in light of the safety and the maintenance issues, the committee voted to recommend that the city approve use of the artificial turf in these two limited spaces. So we need a vote. We need a vote. Rabbi Needham and Bozina, all in favor? Aye. Against? You're going against? Abstentions, you're against? <laughs> okay, abstentions? Motion carried, one no. Okay, now we move on to the public hearing that we held um, for two issues, the Pfizer project and the special permit for uh, self-storage units. Um, as you, I'm sure, read in, in the report, uh, they are asking for, this is, this is privately owned property, they're asking for mandatory inclusionary housing designation. Uh, there will be um, 287 affordable units um, broken down as I I with uh, an, uh, a, a, an average rate of 60% AMI, uh, four, uh, 404 parking spaces. Uh, there will be uh, commercial spaces, mostly small, but one uh, is big enough to house a, um, a supermarket if, if that's what uh, is, is, is decided on or, or needed. Uh, the affordable housing would be completely integrated with the, uh, with the market rate units and will have equal access to all of the amenities. And um, in response to requests by the community, there will be no studio apartments. Um, now, also in response to concerns that were raised by the speakers uh, and the residents who attended the public hearing, the, uh, the developer has agreed in writing to, um, to pay uh, the, the uh, prevailing wages to serve as workers at the new site. Uh, they have agreed in writing to hire local workers for both construction and operation of the development. Uh, they've committed to give the community board prior notice of the opening of the affordable housing lottery and to market the affordable units directly to the public. Uh, plus, they've committed in writing to work with the local organizations to get word out about the opportunity to apply for the affordable housing. The committee voted unanimously to approve the application with incorporation of these above commitments, and the committee noted the desperate need for affordable housing in that area, uh, and also noted that um, the, the, the presence of the federal lawsuit, which at, at this point threatens to take away our, our community um, preference. So um, anyway, we need a vote on that. Rabbi Needham, you have a question, Marty, or second? Comment. 
Is that your name again? Rabbi Niederman, motion indeed. All in favor? Oh, you want to comment on the motion? I know for the record, I came in late to the land use committee. I came in 15 minutes late, and the, the vote had already happened. So I want to note that I would have voted against had I been at the meeting. Uh, but the, just briefly, and, I, and we've seen the materials circulated and the, the statement from uh, Council Member Reynoso, but it's a much larger situation. Uh, well, one a, yeah, we can't really hear it. Sorry. Yeah. It is much larger issues involved here in terms of opposition to spot zoning. There's a whole comprehensive Broadway Triangle area, urban renewal area. This adjoins it. It was part. It was not. It was part of the urban renewal area, but not part of the area that was rezoned. So it has to require a separate rezoning now. The sense was, and the whole purpose of the whole struggle over the Broadway Triangle was to make sure that we have comprehensive community-based planning. And uh, this is just a throwaway spot. Here's what we want to do, boom, let's do it. Secondly, about affordable housing. Our experience, we've all been exposed to this, is if you build significantly more market rate housing than the affordable housing, the amount of displacement impact on the surrounding area, you lose much, much more affordable housing than you gain by the construction of new housing, not to mention the fact that the construction of new housing is not necessarily for the people who live in the neighborhood, and the affordable housing, quote unquote, requires such significant bureaucratic compliance that 99% of the people are not eligible, not to mention the fact you get 87,000 applications. The bigger thing we have to do is to preserve the existing housing and prevent the displacement of existing people. Uh, and by the way, one of the things that they refuse to do, and this, uh, that the city refused to do and the, and the, uh, is, to allow, if you give a preference for, for residents of the neighborhood, to include people who've lived here for the last for five years before who've been forced out, to give them a chance to come back. That's out. That's not included. But, it's a, but again, it's a larger issue in terms of comprehensive planning, not to mention, this is the last thing I'll say, is the Rapsky, the, 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 the developers, proposed developers, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Rabinowitz and Mr. Uh, and Mr. Uh, Ra um, uh, Dushinsky, and another pr uh, person in the circle, have a history, A, it's not just that they uh, didn't comply, now they're complying with the proposed agreement, they refused to, to, to address, to deal with the community at all in the whole Rheingold discussions, just refused, and did what they wanted to do, minimum, meet the re minimum requirements, goodbye. No relationship, uh, just hostile relationship to the community in any way. Uh, and then the other thing, the other thing is that, that they have a history of uh, bad management. I mean, people dying. There's just recently a guy died in the elevator. That was, a, that was their management company that got that elevator operating, and it's the same management company where somebody else died a year earlier for, uh, in a different site that they, you imagine they'd be aware of. So it's just like, it's not the kind of housing that we need. It's not the kind of rezoning that we need. And we have to have a much more thoughtful and comprehensive plan to save our neighborhood. And I think we have to be smart, not stupid, about all of this. Rabbi Needham, you want to make a statement on the motion? <coughs> to say nay, what are we going to say to the hundreds and hundreds of people who are waiting for opportunity for affordable housing? We are denying those rights. We have now an opportunity. And all of us have to look in our eyes. If my brother, my sister, my child would need affordable housing, what would I do? So therefore, we have now a project affordable housing. And they will be required to do that. In addition to what they did in Rheingold, where they were not required, they, by law, and they, they're doing affordable housing, but I don't want to go there. Here, we are secured that we're going to have close to 300 affordable units. So therefore, I would say what I would do for my child to make sure that he or she has a, has a roof on top of their head 
this is the opportunity for everybody over here in community board one who are dying to have affordable housing. Here you have opportunity. Don't waste it. Que question number two. You said about not engaging the community. I think all of us who were with the past few months following the process, the developer came at the voluntary, at the request of the board a few months ago and said, we are here to present to you the project. They didn't have to do that. They did that two years ago, two or three years ago as well. And again, as, as the chair of the Land Use Committee, our chair s said, there were three opportunities for people and unanimously we voted for that, for that and therefore we are asking and say, please, for the sake of all of us, it's a lottery. Everybody has the same right to have a, a unit. And therefore, for the sake of all of us, let us vote for the project. Number three, what you are talking about, about the elevator. A, if you follow the newspaper, it was unfortunately a fatality, had nothing to do with a new elevator from a, from a company, nothing to do with the management. In fact, OSHA was there, buildings department were there a few minutes later, and that's commendable because we're dealing with a fatality. And what was the result? And the result was that there was no citations because they complied fully with the law. So they, uh, we are asking, we have a developer here who is going to provide decent housing for everyone. So I urge my fellow members, for the sake of all of us, we should vote yes as the committee who has belabored this project for so long has said yes, let us all say yes. Thank you. I would like to just add that the committee was concerned about the complaints, the safety complaints, and the and the complaints about concern about uh, the uh, prevailing wages and hiring uh, locals and all of those other things that are laid out in the report. And the uh, the applicant acceded to every one of these demands. Ex acceded to all you know, answered all of these concerns, and we did find out that there are no, I, I mean, the Rheingold is not in this community board, but we did look in to see whether there were any violations against the developer, whether there were any findings of any kind of uh, liability with safety issues, and we were, we are not aware of any such, um, any such problems. So I just wanna, you know, state that for the record. Yeah. Uh, you're here? And you wanna speak? Okay. Thank you for that correction, Tom. Go ahead, Rob. Thanks, Tom. Tom's just been a lawyer. So I just want to clarify two points uh, and to what Rabbi Mito was saying. I think he's right. I think there's a passion for affordable housing for a community you represent. I have the same passion for the Latino community. I don't blame you for having that same passion. I have the same passion. I think the approach is different. We have different approaches in how we put forth. The Broadway Triangle Resort, I just want to make a comment on this because it's related to this. The Broadway Triangle Part 1, the private sites were allowed to build. There's over a 1,000 units of private sites in the Broadway Triangle that are Jewish-owned and Jewish-rented. So as a clear indication, there is no diversity in the Broadway Triangle private section, which is fine. It's a private section. You can, within laws, can do as much as you can to expand your community. But it's a 1,000 th plus units in that Broadway Triangle already that already represent the Jewish community. And no other Latino or African American or any other race is in that area as it is now. So to say that this, which has 300 plus affordable, to think that the 700 is gonna be market rate and not another expansion of the Jewish community, I would say is ill-advised. To not look at the history of that community and not to look at the old Broadway Triangle, this Broadway Triangle, again, I get it. There is an approach to expand a community, that there's a need for affordable housing, but I think to do it on the backs 
of a rezoning and to do it on a site that was made for manufacturing and to twist it into residential, that needs a community support and needs a diversity of African American, Latino, and Jewish community. I think then is a diversity, not just an expansion of one community. And if it is, then it should be it should be said publicly and say, look, this is our expansion of our community. We can't move to North 12th. We can't move to Greenpoint. We don't have the infrastructure to go that way. We have to be in Broadway Triangle. I would respect if that is the approach that that should be said publicly. If if it isn't. That was said 10 years ago, that the Broadway Triangle was going to be diverse. The Broadway Triangle was going to have Latino, African American. I if you see the Broadway Triangle today and all the private units, if you can show me the Latino-owned building, the African American-owned building, and the 1,000-plus units in Broadway Triangle, I was proven right then. We can wait 10 years, and you can come back and tell me in 10 years, oh, well, it didn't work out that way. You were right. So I already have a history of 10 years that is an expansion of the Jewish community. Again, I understand the approach, Rabbi Needleman. I understand that you're fighting for your community. Say it again. <laughs> you fight for Latinos, I forgot. I so I, the, the point I want to make is if you vote today, you're voting for an expansion of one block of a community. You're voting for, for and they need housing. I don't think that they don't need housing. But I think that when we approach it, the Broadway Triangle Coalition, Churches United, and other groups, we approach it, we always are mindful that we should try to divvy up in, th in one and thirds and fourths, whoever is around the community. And that's our approach. So that's the difference in approach. I want to make that very noted. Ten years ago, we voted Broadway Triangle. We said it was going to be diverse. It wasn't diverse, and it isn't diverse, and it's proven not to be diverse. To say this is a diverse, that everyone has a shot, and everyone's going to get an apartment, it's not really accurate. If you build four or five bedroom apartments, I don't have 10 or six or 10 or 12 family members to put in a four or five bedroom apartment. So I just want to make that clear. That's my point, Madam Chair. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, I, I really must respond to that because the request for family size apartments with more than one bedroom came from all non Hasidic non-Jewish members of this community came to our meetings and said that they really wanted to make sure that we didn't just have studio apartments and that we would have multiple dwelling, mul multiple bedroom apartments. And because of that, the developer agreed there would be no studio apartments. It was at the request of residents who were not part of the Hasidic community. And I, again, I'm not telling people how to vote. I just want to make clear that these affordable units have to go by lottery, and they are regulated. And I don't know if Rob is implying that it, there, it, that it's it's there's a fraud being committed. That it's it's, but because the the, the, the well then then I don't understand. Because the affordable units have to be have to be given out by lottery. I think you can just let me finish. The the affordable unit. I said I don't know if you are implying that. I, I don't know how you can say that the affordable units will only go to the Hasidic. So let's make it clear. The affordable units have to go by a very strictly regulated lottery. Uh, go ahead. Clar clarify, Rob. Can we okay, please have quiet when somebody is speaking? Can we so please point of have quiet? Two things. One, if you're right, if I want a multi-dwelling unit, I'll say a two-bedroom apartment or a three-bedroom apartment. When you lay out the apartment, four, five, six bedrooms, you need eight, nine, 12 people to meet that. The typical family size of a Latino is three person in this district and community board one. You don't have enough family members to put into a four or five. So I'm not saying fraud. You don't have enough family members to put in in a four or five, six bedroom. That is how you work around that. that. So it's not fraud. It's a legitimate family size. There's 10 people in a family size. A typical Latino has three persons. So if you have some two bedrooms and mostly four or five bedrooms, that's how you get around that. So that's a, it's not a fraud. It's a legit family size. So it's not fraud, and I want to just clarify that. It says there's a certain family size that exists that a certain community cannot meet the numbers and a certain community can. So yes, of course, nobody wants studios, but nobody also wants all of it to be five or six bedrooms. So that's a point of clarification. Thank you. Okay, I'm not gonna speak on the five or six bedrooms because it's not my experience. 
I don't know what statistical measures were utilized to arrive at that figure, but I have to say that I am a Latina, I live at Schaefer Landing, and I u occupy a four-bedroom apartment because my family is that large. And I also have to say that every person that lives in the same line that I live, and I live in the E-line, are all Latinos and African Americans. All four bedroom apartments. I'm not trying to sway the vote or tell anyone how to vote. However, Latino families can also be big. Again, I'm not gonna say five and six, okay? But I don't, I do know Latinos that are three family households, but most of the Latino families that I know are more than three people in the family. Just wanna say. and that the, the four bedrooms went the majority of for, uh, for Latino. So the process is bulletproof. It's going to be a process that the affordable apartments are definitely being distributed with government, government, uh, government supervision. And, and, and the, the market rate apartment is free to everyone. I have challenged anybody who ever said that is discrimination in renting or selling, show me one person that can come to me and say, I wanted to buy, I wanted to rent here in South Williamsburg, and I was denied opportunity. I will file the claim at HCR for discrimination. So far, at a public hearing, at three sheets, I said that, and nobody challenged me. It is most probably 10 years now. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's, we were supposed we supposed to do our election at 8 o'clock. It's a little past 8. Can I have the election committee to collect the ballots, please? Simon Weiser, Mr. Gross, and Ms. Burroughs. Please give them your ballots. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your ballot has to be signed, otherwise it's not valid. Valid. Huh? The ballots must be signed, otherwise it's not valid. Did everybody give their ballot in? Did everybody give their ballot in? Did everybody give in their ballot? The election committee will count the ballots and then come back to Rob, excuse me. The meeting is still in session. Rob and then uh, Toby. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'll be quick, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, sorry. So she, where are you? Oh, sorry. sorry about that, Jerry. Okay, so statistically speaking, she is correct. There are Latino families that do have seven, six, five members in community board, one that makes up 7% of the community, 7%. So the other 90-something percent is family of three. That is the median. Yes, I can bump into someone that has five people, the people in your building, of course, if there's four bedrooms. Of course, 
for this. Statistically speaking, it's seven percent. I don't know what that means. Oh, the my, my numbers? Yeah, the census. It's the census. The late census. Yes, the 2010 with our with our own data, which has 5,000 names on it. That's the average median is three. Family size of three. If you think it's more, you can actually HPD. HPD will call me back to say it's average. Average family size is medium family of three. There is larger families in the Latino community. It is about seven percent of that community. It exists, no doubt about it. We're just not even having a lot of kids. It's seven percent of the district. The rest of the district, 90 something, is a family size of three. They may all be living in an apartment, your grandmother, your mother, and your aunt, they all don't wanna live together, but they're all living in that unit. That's why it looks like it's 10, but grandma don't wanna live with mama, and mama don't wanna live with the daughter. So they don't wanna live together. They just all live there. It just happens to be that way. And then the second point that I wanna make, uh, which is, he's right, Schaefer Landing is a waterfront, a prime example when we can all get together. It's not the prime example. I said one thing, no one has challenged me. There's a thousand new units in Broadway Triangle today. It is owned and rent and occupied by Jewish families. If I am wrong, I'll do a rabbi. Yes. Correct me. Yes. There's a thousand yes. units yes. there. Yes. Is anyone else there living? Yes. Tell me. Okay, I don't want to give this my last, my last chance. And I hope that this ends the discussion. Everybody can go back to their lives. There's many important items that people are here sitting and had to be dealt with. So let's go just myth and facts. Myth, it was presented to you that you are voting on a project that is going to have four, five, six bedrooms. And I asked the lawyer and he basically says, there's no distribution of that. And in fact, he said he believes, he believes that HPD would not even approve that. So that is, so the myth was, this is all Jews, and we have a three, be three four bedroom. It says on it, it's described Jewish. And if it, in, and so I'm telling you right now, I'm not going, I'm saying that's a myth. The same thing where, so, so the fact is that no, there is no distribution four, five, six, and the attorney is telling me that that is not, he does not believe it will pass. The second thing you're talking about, Schaefer, that's a wonderful project. You get it on. Rob, you, I love you, but you are the late kid on the block. You weren't there. I went to Schaefer, and Schaefer, let me tell you, Schaefer was opposed at all different levels. And it was, so nobody got together, but rather, it was a post, and I am proud, and you should be proud, and everybody was proud. That was the first project of, on the waterfront that was, uh, went through the new waterfront regulations, and I am proud that Latinos, African-American Jews, everybody found their home over there, and that is going to be a prime example. In just a second, I'm finishing off. How many percent of the Schaefer are Jewish? Let's do another Schaefer. How many You have, you, uh, we have, uh, on, of the 149 apartments, 40 apartments are Jewish. 40 apartments are Jewish. So, it's true. So, this, you want to do another one? This is your chance. You have 300, close to 300 affordable apartments. The rest are going to be the same as Schaefer. You want the carbon copy of Schaefer. I'm sorry, I cannot do that because Schaefer is sold for $1,000 a square foot and here it's going to be much cheaper, which is available to anybody. And as I said, I present to me one instance that somebody was discriminated and I will join ranks with you, Rob, and go file a complaint. And we will we'll also ask Mari to join. Okay. <laughs> um, so ju just a clarification. There are no four or five bedrooms being proposed in this development. That is not what is being proposed here, just so you all know. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There are no four or five bedrooms. No, no, there are no four or five bedrooms. This is what they were told. 
They were told we don't know yet. In the meeting when this was presented, they said we don't know yet. We don't know the apartment layout. Okay, so Councilman. Councilman, Councilman, Councilman Levin has just clarified also that there are no four or five bedrooms no, being proposed. No, 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 oh, no five or six bedrooms being proposed. Sorry, no five or six bedrooms being proposed. Maybe some four. Okay, okay, everybody calm down, calm down. We got Toby, we got Tom, we got Bozina, and we got Marty. Let me just tell you, on, on uh, Monday, July 10th at 6 o'clock, there will be a hearing on this item at Borough Hall. When we take the names that, we, that I just called, that will be the end of the discussion on this item. Toby. I wasn't able to go in a week. I have on my calendar and there are at least three notices sent out. And I think I have, I'm, I, my son is waiting at home for me to study for a final. I think it's not fair right now. I missed one community board meeting. I go to every committee meeting. Letting, giving people multiple chances to speak is really not respectful of everybody's time. So I think we should go for a vote. But the thing about this, Toby, the people is, asked me Toby, to speak Toby, this is a contentious issue. And we want the public to be heard as much as possible. You know, if you have to leave, you have to leave. I understand. I understand, and thank you for your comment, Tom. Uh, for those of you who read the written material that you're emailed and the material that Antonio gave you, I think Antonio Reynoso outlined very thoughtfully the concerns about this project, and I join him in urging us to vote no for this project. Um, there needs to be much more complete community input into this. We've been fighting about the Broadway Triangle for some time. It's in federal court at this time. There's issues of land use, manufacturing, a discrimination issues still have to be resolved. Um, this developer, many people do not trust. Um, there seems to be a lot of uh, interest by certain people in this. I would like to know how many people are gonna recuse themselves on the vote, because everybody sounds like they're working for the developer. This one knows how many bedrooms, this one knows how many, everybody seems to have an interest here. So it sounds like half the board needs to recuse on this one. But I think we should vote no on this. There should be a plan for Broadway Triangle, and that this is not the, program we want to have. I represent the Polish community in Greenpoint and I fully support this. I joined the community board to build affordable housing, to be part of this process. We truly, truly need the housing in this community. I, I live in Greenpoint, we have a high rises left and right, and the people cannot afford to live in Greenpoint. There is a large community, Polish community, that is moving out because they cannot afford uh, the rents that are in this neighborhood. So I'm, I'm fully supported uh, of this project, and I did my di due diligence. I attended all the meetings. I listened to everybody objection. And I am in support of this project. So please, take it into consideration. There's some different views. Our responsibility as a board members is to be on top of this developer, to put everything in writing, all of our concerns, and follow through. This is the responsibility of our community board. Thank you. Marty. As she just pointed out, because of the high rises that were built in Greenpoint, there's no longer affordable housing in Greenpoint. That's exactly what's happening here. But more fundamentally, more fundamentally, these rezonings are not as of right. So we have the capacity and opportunity to maximize the benefits of any rezoning we want to have. So let me tell you, I live on South Third between Keep and Hooper for 45 years. Two bedroom apartments are being sold on my block on a vacant lot. 1.4 million for a two-bedroom apartment. So here's the, here's the reality. A developer can make a fortune 
on even 30% market rate because there's people willing to pay a fortune for these apartments. And as a result, they can easily build two-thirds affordable and still make a huge profit. We're, we're, we're giving huge amounts of money in the hands of people who don't need it at the expense of affordable housing for the apartments we do need. And we have a choice. Now, we're encouraged because there's a lot of money floating around to make the wrong choice. I think we have to be smart and do the right thing for our community and maximize if we convert these things to commercial and industrial, and there's some reason not to, because there's, there's increased opportunities for, uh, for jobs in, the, in commercial and industrial uses. But if we, if, we do, if we do rezone, we have to rezone with taking advantage of the maximum opportunities here, and the market rate is such that you can actually get much, much, much truly more affordable housing. There were like 87,000 applications for 140 apartments at Schaefer Landing. Uh, so anyhow, Anyhow, so I, I just think that we have to be smart about this and not just go ahead with what people want to make money on. Thank you, Marty. I'd like to <laughs> thank you, Marty. I'd like I'm I'm glad we were able to have some input. The hour was late. The yes. Yes. Would you please be so kind, Madam Chair, as to once again state the date for the hearing and verbal? I was just getting ready to do that. Thank you. I, we've said all what we can say a community board. We've done our due diligence. We've had our public hearing. We've had our committee meetings, and we've had our board meeting. I encourage everyone to go to Borough Hall on July 10th. That's a Monday at 6 o'clock to voice your opinions. Let's make sure that we are there on July 10th at 6 o'clock at Borough Hall, where we can continue this dialogue. Thank you. Can I have a roll call vote, please? People understand the vote? People understand what they're voting on? Do everybody understand what we are voting on? Does everyone understand what we are voting on? I guess so. Call the roll. Gina Argento, Bogdan Bakarowski. Bogdan Bakarowski. Huh? You have to speak up, please. Lisa Bamonte. Louis Baricelli. Gina Barros. Moses Bondo. Eric Brazitis. Tom Burroughs. Phil Caponegro. Frank Carbone. Stephen Chesler, Michael Chiricella, Teresa Cinciata, Joshua Cohn, Arthur Dibinowski, T. Willis Elkins, Julia Amanda Foster, Samuel Francois, Emily Gallagher, Quiet Please, Vincent Gangone. Joel Gross, Sonia Iglesia, Moisha Indig, Bozina Kaminsky, Ryan Coonan, Joel Landau, Marie Lianza, Giorgio Mayer, Aaron McCann, Trina McKeeva, Trina McKeeva, speak up please, Iris Manaya. Toby Moskowitz, Martin Needleman, yes. Simon Neustein, yes. Rabbi Niederman, yes. Karen Nieves, Mary O'Domerick, yes. Rabbi Perlstein, Janice Peterson, yes. Isaac Sofer, yes. Robert Solano, no. James Stewart, <laughs> Del Teague, yes. Tommy Torres, Maria Vieta, Stephen Weidberg, Simon Weiser, Tessa Wilson, Lo Yo,
26 yes, 15 no, one abstention, motion carries. Thank you. Okay, so we still have one more. Um, oh, do the election results first? Yes, let's do the election results. The election results are as follows. One no vote. One person did not vote. Chairperson, 38 votes. First vice chairperson, 37 votes. Second vice chairperson, 34 votes. Third vice chairperson, 38 votes. Financial secretary, 38 votes. Recording secretary, 38 votes. Member at large, 37 votes. Attendance committee, Rabbi Niederman, 37 votes. Rabbi Perlstein, 37 votes. Janice Peterson, 40 votes. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I'd like to thank everybody for their vote, and it's been a pleasure working with you, and hopefully we'll continue to work for the betterment of Greenpoint, Williamsburg. Thank you. Okay. Onward and forward here with the land use. So the, uh, the second item that was at the public hearing was the proposed zoning text amendment by CPC to have a special permit for I, I ask that you listen because actually there was a lot of opposition from the community to this to to the to the city's um, uh, zoning text uh, proposal. So the city once has proposed to have a special uh, permit needed for all new self storage facilities within designated areas in the M districts, mostly in the IBZs. Now, the explanation for this is that they want to promote uh, growth and research, the, promote the growth and the resurgence of industry in North Brooklyn. Let me just say something. Ladies and gentlemen, if we lose our quorum, we will have to close this meeting. We'll have to finish in July. Guys, we have to, we don't want to come back here in July. <laughs> Hello. So there was opposition by a number of residents and by one of the self-storage companies, the Safe and Lock self-storage company, because they felt that forcing the, the, uh, the um, self-storage facilities to get special permits will hurt, prob probably fatally hurt, many of these small businesses in this community, especially the ones that are, are starting on online businesses, and there's a real burgeoning uh, online business community in this area. They said that the, um, these businesses cannot afford to rent, to pay the rents for, uh, in warehouses which have un 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 unneeded large sizes and, and the prices are just too much. As a matter of fact, there's a, um, a survey that shows that anywhere from 30 to 40 percent of the self-storage units are being used by businesses uh, and, and also by the, um, the Department of the Homeless Services to help families who are in transition from homelessness. Um, they also noted that many working and middle class residents who rely on self-storage as their only affordable storage option will uh, lose their ability to, to store their things and or might be forced to try to go to warehouses which they really can't afford. So the opponents also noted that, um, and this is maybe a little bit out of the, uh, the scope here, but just to let you know that there was uh, some support for what we've been saying to the city, which was, look, if you're, you're concerned about, you know, having these large spaces used by, uh, uh, by entities that are not really uh, doing s that much good for the community, you should have uh, done, you should have done the, the special permit for the hotels first. So not that that's going to uh, change the, the vote here on the self-storage, but uh, this was raised and, and the city was confronted about that. In any case, the uh, committee voted unanimously to disapprove the zoning text amendment until a further study is conducted to show how the above negative effects on our, bu on our small businesses and our private residents can be addressed and ameliorate, ameliorated if this zoning text amendment is enacted. S Simon, you have a question? 
You're back in the motion. No, I would like to speak on this. Simon made a motion. Bozina second. You want to speak on the motion? Yes. On the motion. Yes. Okay. I'm, I would urge everybody to vote for the zoning tech amendment. Um, we are losing manufacturing space. We do not need to have these large self storage facilities just popping up as of right. We should have input on them. They hire very few people, they employ very few people. Um, they take up a lot of space, they're taking away manufacturing space. I think we should support the change and work on the hotel one and the large music venue, but let's start by getting these self-storage places out of here. Next, please. Yes. Um, we, we, we came with the, with the same sentiment from the same meeting. Today, you, you will come to the land use meeting. Mike. We'll make it quick. If we, if we came with the same sentiment. Everyone was for it, and we were excited to vote for it. Actually, by the meeting, we heard first-hand knowledge that it's not true. Uh, they have so many manufacturing employees, each and every of them, like a 500 square foot in all of the buildings. Not recognized because the payroll system is not actually on the side where they are. But all of the new um, businesses, so, um, startups, small Amazon and all of those are actually doing a lot of business. We were impressed with all the first hand information. All of came actually to the land use committee uh, twice and, 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 and but it was the guy from the person who has the self interest in this, right? No. It was actually people who use it, not people who making uh, 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 who convinced us unanimously. We came all with the same attitude that you have and we were imp impressed actually with listening to small people who have one two three four five employees who is who ma making a living out of just a small small pop, sh uh, pop and shop thank you you oh. um all in favor the, the committee voted to disapprove this application all in favor Disapproving. 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 Yes. Disapproving. Yes. 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 Y
and the developer will establish a community advisory committee to study traffic issues. Those were the uh, those were the um, uh, conditions that we put on our approval in the past. So I'm wondering if people would want to just vote on that rather than having me caucus and then come back to you again. I have one, I have one question. Can I ask a question? Yeah. She mentioned in her presentation that this was the last extension. Does that mean that if they don't build in whatever time period, they can't come back again? Come back after Uh, she's here. Why don't we ask her? Come forward. Is this the last time you can ask for an extension? Yeah, this is it. Oh. Uh, all right. Okay, we're not supposed to allow it. I'll, I'll take her out and find out the answer. Do the land use committee want to go out with uh, Dell and caucus on this? Make it brief, guys. Right, guys I'm trying to get us out of here. Dell, you want this? Uh, parts committee, men, uh, as written. Public session. Jerry, will you call up the first three speakers, please? Gang on, can you come back, please? I'm sorry. I had a, I had a senior moment. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, the L train update. Uh, the time has been revised from 18 to 15 months, so it's been shortened. The start time also won't be in January, which would be frigid cold usually, and it will be moved to April 2019. So we get a few more months. Um, as far as the, uh, the adding buses, the MTA is looking to add 200 buses uh, along Grand Street and the surrounding areas around Bedford Avenue, North Summit, and Berry. These buses are dedicated to transport riders directly uh, to Delancey Street and the first, uh, the first Avenue stop where you could pick up all the other trains. Uh, a one transfer will be allowed on any means of transportation, whether it be ferry, buses, or trains, and two and fourth, any one of those combinations. Uh, the buses will leave every four minutes, according to the MTA. Uh, they will s we, we still have not found out if we will have an express lane or a dedicated lane over to the Waynesburg Bridge, but this is what they have uh, in the process right now. Uh, Metro card users will be chipped that when you use it in the for, uh, for mentioned stations, ferries, so on and so forth, that that would be an automatic transfer. Uh, the L line also will continue and will stop at Bedford Avenue, not Lama Street, as previously reported, which would uh, it's a good reprieve for many people. Uh, also, the M line will be suspended from Metropolitan Avenue to Myrtle Avenue starting July 1st, uh, let's see, uh, through September 1st for repairs. And also, after those repairs, you have to expect the L line will experience 13 weekends of shutdown up until the start date. I guess that's where the difference is from the 18 to 15 months. But those will only be weekends, no uh, work days. Uh, let's see. Uh, also, uh, starting in July, the MTA will install barriers at two locations in the Bedford Avenue uh, train, uh, train stop locations. This is to install new exiting staircases uh, when they start the, uh, the work. Because, like I said, the train will stop there. Uh, but the MTA will return with updates on the logistics, bus routes, and other alternatives. No vote is required. Two on the agenda is the New York City DOT, SIP, North 4th Street, and Metropolitan Avenue. There are several areas listed in the report showing the locations of new neck down and crosswalks so pedestrians could travel safely to and from each corner. 
The committee recommends a vote for approval, so I need a motion. Eric? Weisberg? All in favor? Aye. Against? Tom? Abstentions? Two abstentions? Maria and Tom? Uh, also, I'd like to add the several locations that are listed are in the report. You can look at them. It's only for the uh, safety of the pedestrians. We're all for it. Just wanted to add. It's been taken. The motion carried. Okay. Uh, three is the DOT SIP Meeker Avenue, Union Avenue to Graham Avenue. Uh, th this is, has been separated because it was connected to the, the first uh, uh, part. Uh, the MTA is proposing to eliminate all left turns from Union Avenue to Graham Avenue, and they wanted to create a jug handle onto ad adjacent side streets, which are 90% residential. Uh, and then, so it'd be making two lefts, a left and a left, so you could get back underneath the Meeker Avenue. Uh, the, the committee strongly opposed it and disagreed, and so we separated it, uh, but the, the committee voted to disapprove unanimously, and uh, even though we weren't gonna bring it up to the board, actually, I wanna bring it to the board, and I want a uh, uh, motion for a vote to disapprove. Tom, got a question? Union. They have already done a jug handle, and it doesn't have any signs. So people are going there, and they've changed the traffic lights, so both lanes are going at the same time, and they're turning into each other at that corner. I'm not aware of it, Tom. Wait, Union and... Where the ramp comes off the highway, and where Mika oh, goes, okay. they used to be delayed lights, so you can turn. They made them both go at the same time. Oh, okay. I, I know what no you're talking sign. about. Getting there and turning into each other. Show me again. Right. 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 Right a few of the side streets, which would be, uh, let's just say, for example, Frost. Frost would have all the traffic that wants to make a left, would have to go up residential Frost, make a left on Graham or wherever street that brings you, and then bring it all the way across the, um, the underneath the BQE, which would create havoc, and it's all residential areas. Uh, would the, vote, uh, the committee voted to unanimously disapprove, and I would like to have a vote on that. You have a question? Well, that, correct, that we're already doing that. They're already doing to see what they want to do. Also, we told them to hold off because of the Kosciuszko Bridge uh, has not been finished, and it's all cre also creating a traffic uh, pattern and hazards. So, I mean, as far as the plan itself, I personally voted to disapprove because I don't think it's a good solution, and then they will, will come back and see what they uh, report to try to do in that situation. But as of... What was uh, presented, the committee votes to disapprove. Do I have a motion? You, what, you got a question? Uh, right now, there's two parts to it. Can, can you vote on what the committee approved first? We did, we just did that. Oh. We voted to approve the, the first part. That was the crosswalks. Okay. Okay. Can I get a second on the... Uh, Trina, uh, Rose, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Abstentions? Okay, yeah, uh, next one. Abstention. On Motion carried. Thank you. Uh, next four is the New York City DOT Street C programs for Toby the State uh, Coffee. Uh, they, I believe they sent us the petitions for approval. We received them. So the committee uh, was waiting on that. So the committee. Uh, is in is voting for approval of Toby Estates for the Street C program. So I need a motion. That's the you know when you get the tables and chairs to put out uh, in the street and just like we've done almost every month. Uh, uh, it's the Street C program where you have uh, tables and chairs where the the whole 
neighborhood or the whole block can use it to sit there. It's not, it's not to any particular, uh, well, it has, it's in the, re, I believe it's in the report. That was North 6th. It was in the middle of North 6th, and right in front of Tobey's Estate Coffee. North 6th, I don't have the cross street. I believe it was between Bedford and Berry. Berry? Yeah, that's also, that was also an old driveway that's not being used again, so we're really not losing any spots. Uh, they also are going to pay to maintain it and to upkeep, and the initial architectural structure, which is like a box, they're spending approximately 15000 to get that done, and any upkeep uh, thereafter is, is up to Toby's Estates, just like all the others we've done in the past. So the committee votes for approval. I need a motion. You got a mo you motion and uh, making a motion, uh, Rob? Sofa, Rob. All in favor? Aye. Against? Abstentions? Motion carried. Thank you. There'll be more coming. There's one stated for the next meeting as well. Uh, also, number five, TLC renewal, Brighton Beach car service, 361 Union Avenue. Uh, the committee votes for approval. No objections on that item. Thank you. Meeting was adjourned. We're gonna go back to Dell with land use and do the Rose Castle. Rose Plaza. Rose Plaza. So, so Ryan, to answer your question, um, after the three years, if if they don't do, Ryan, yeah, to answer your question, if they don't. If they don't complete this in the, in the three years, if we extend it and they don't complete it, then they have to go start all over again and go back again and ask for the special permit. So um, the, the land use committee just unanimously uh, voted to approve, to extend it with the same resolution and the same requirements that we had last time. Simon, Simon and Weiser, all in favor? Against, abstentions, motion carried. S A C H I D A N S A D A M. Rav, are you here? Come forward, please. Second speaker, Z O U P K A T. Please come forward. And Amber Myers, that one I could figure out. Hello? Ah. Th thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak on this issue. Is so I'm here to talk about the uh, proposed uh, rooftop bar in the Pod Hotel. And the problem with this thing is that it's going to be an excessive amount of uh, noise pollution late at night. And, and it will include various um, 
uh, problems on the street because people are going to be drinking and coming out and uh, late at night and it's going to spill into the streets. And we have collected a huge number of uh, signatures, more than 400, from the neighboring buildings. We're all opposed to this, um, to this travesty, as, as I should say, call it. So the key point here is there is no need to add, I mean, we are not against the hotel. The hotel should exist, but they don't need to add on top a uh, rooftop bar. They can have internal things. It will be contained. There won't be any noise pollution. They'll create jobs. But having a rooftop bar is not going to add to any of the jobs, but it's going to create a huge community problem. And there'll be lots of 911 and 311 calls taxing the civic um, uh, abilities of the city. So. I believe that this should be a post, and there's no need to add to the noise problems of the community. Thank you. Zoop Cat? Nope. Amber Myers? Nope. Next speaker, Richard Bourne. Neil Adam Myers. Hi, I'm Richard Bourne. I'm the developer of the Pod Hotel. Uh, I've been here several times, um, and I know that there are some people. Excuse me, I'm sorry. I know that there's a constituency in the back of the room that is in f not in favor of this project. Th this board has heard from the community and from me. The SLA committee has voted on this, voted 11 to 1 in favor. The, S the SLA. The SLA committee has voted 11 to 1 in favor of the project. The full board voted 35 to nothing in favor of the project. That was after three public sessions in this room on the project. Uh, there's been a lot of misinformation passed around, but there's been no new information submitted to this board that has been exposed to the public since their 35 to nothing approval of the project. There's been misinformation. There's misinformation about noise. We have a sound study that the SLA committee and the board has reviewed. There's talk about noise. We have no music. We, only, we, have, we don't even have background music. We merely have people talking on the roof. We have met with State Senator Lentil. We've offered an additional proposal of a, of a six-foot glass wall surrounding the roof bar, and we've offered everybody in the back of the room to come sit and talk to us, to come to the roof of the building, and nobody has been answering any of our Quiet, emails please, questions. quiet. Allow the speaker to speak. Let's be respectful. There's been disinformation. There was a, a particular person who testified at our 500-foot ruling uh, hearing at the SLA saying, my window faces that bar. There is no window facing the bar. I went up there. I took a picture of the building adjacent, and it is a, a concrete wall. In addition, we've had a lot of dissent from the Fillmore Block Association. Fillmore is so far away, they will not hear anything here. Additionally, additionally, I think Fillmore, before they said anything, should have disclosed to the fact that they're in active litigation against one of the developers of this project on Please an Please summarize. Situation. This board has met, this board has made a decision, and this board has approved. And in the event you move to overturn your own decision, months later, after a first time of overturning failed, will undermine the credibility of this community board and every other community board. People rely on the board. Please and summarize, please. People rely on please the board. Please summarize. So I, I urge you not to overturn your informed decision that was made after public discourse, public opinion, based upon information that has never been testified to here in public. Sir, you've, you've, you, you've used your allotted time. Thank you. We Thank don't want to have to shut your mic off. Thank you. You're welcome. Nilsa Roman.
Quiet, please. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Nilsa Roman. My name is Nilsa Roman. I live, I'm, I'm a resident from the Cooper Park houses, and I'm also here with Greg. The reason that we're here is because we live in the neighborhood and we also co are concerned about the building on Deborah Voice and Maspid, which is the old Greenpoint Hospital. We walk by there every single day, and I see that building deteriorating along with our neighbors for over, for over 35 years, yes. Last week, I passed by, and there was people living inside the, the building. They were in there, I called 911 and made a police complaint. The next day, I saw other people going in there. From my understanding, there were mattress in there, and there were people living there. We are asking for the board to stand by us, along with HPD and Greg. Another thing I want to bring attention to everyone here is that I've been living there. I was there when Cooper Park, when Greenpoint Hospital was open, when they closed it, when they opened Woodhall Hospital. We fought for low-income houses, and we're always being denied. We are always given the wraparound, the runaround, pass the bucket, you name it, they've done it to us. We have a park across the street. We have students, we have kids, we have seniors that are walking around there, and we are also worried about our safety. Sanitation comes around once in a blue moon to clean the outside of Cooper, of Maspid and Devil Voice. If anyone wants me to come back, not on July 10, I will come back and show you pictures. And we also have a lot of homeless there. Thank you. We thank you all because yes. this is a very serious situation. They have opened the fence and they go down into the basement. Miss, miss, did you yes. sign up to speak? Yes. What's her name? I'm Deborah Benders. I'm a Cooper Park Resident Council member and I'm also a Greg member. I witnessed, along with Ms. Roman, people going inside the building, along with dogs. The building wasn't designed for people to live that way. It's not an open area. It's unsafe for anybody that walks past that area, day or night, yeah. all right? We come here because we're concerned about our safety. There's a lot of seniors that walk that same path and kids going to that park. Safety is number one. We ask for your support in this. To help us with a safe environment. Thank you. Thank you. Adam Myers, Reverend Tabor. Hi, everybody. I'm Adam Myers. I work with Brooklyn Legal Services Corporation A, and I'm here on behalf of the Broadway Triangle Community Coalition to oppose what has already been approved, the uh, the Pfizer sub plan. The I'm sorry? There, there will be no interruption of the speakers. There will, there will be no interruption of the speakers. Thank you. Continue. Uh, uh, the coalition is opposed to this for several reasons, but our concerns are, are, there are three primary ones, the displacement, the segregation, and the bad faith on the part of the developer. Uh, we're worried about the displacement because, you know, as is acknowledged in the environmental impact statement, this is going to bring more than 4,000 new residents into the neighborhood. The vast majority of these are going to be wealthier, whiter people. This is going to increase the uh, quarter mile around it by more than 20% of the population. It's going to increase the half mile around it by more than 5%. And this influx of new residents is going to drive up prices and it's going to drive up rents and it's going to displace more people than it houses. Second, this displacement is going to be coming into the community into a context rich with historical racial discrimination and segregation. Uh, 
and since you know most of the folks coming into this development are going to be rich and white and most of the people displaced are going to be low income people of color this is only going to make the existing segregation issue worse and finally the developer of this project Ravsky group is an entity with a documented history of refusing to honor development commitments in which categorically rejects community engagement as a developer of the nearby Rheingold site, Rabsky refused to comply with the affordable housing and local employment commitments upon which the project was approved. And over three years, it has consistently refused to meet or negotiate with community representatives. Even if Rabsky were to make commitments sufficient to satisfy our concerns about displacement and segregation, it has shown itself to be undeserving of our trust. In light of these concerns, we you know, are upset that the community board already voted in favor of this, and we are going to continue to fight this at the borough president level. Thank you. Reverend Tabor? No. Nope. Dorcilla Williams, El Regreso? Good evening. I won't be before you long. My name is Drusilla Williams. I am the regional director for an agency called Acacia Network. The reason why I'm coming to the board today is we'd like to sponsor a program called El Regreso that is located in the Williamsburg se section of Brooklyn on South Third Street. The reason why we'd like to sponsor this program is we'd like to enhance the quality of services and provide more resources to the Brooklyn community. The agency that we that would like to sponsor is called the Cassia Network. Our home-based program is in the Bronx. We've been in the substance abuse and the human service community since 1969. We have programs in the Bronx, Manhattan, and also senior citizens' homes in Puerto Rico. We would really like to become a strong part of your community, enhance the services, help with some of the problems that the community is facing, particularly for the underserved. And we're asking the board support to sponsor this particular program called El Regreso. Thank you. Yes, it is. And we still assist both men and women. Right. We also have an outpatient treatment program. And by allowing Acacia to sponsor, we're going to add affordable housing, transitional housing, senior services, and vocational training. So what the sponsorship would do is allow us to have a greater depth of services at El Regreso. El Regreso would still maintain its co corporate identity, but we would sponsor to the program and enhance the services. Any more questions? Thank you. Ray Levin. Ray Levin. Nope. Denise Jennings Houston. Good evening. I know already the letter of the law was passed, but I'm going to be speaking from the spirit of the law. My name is Denise Jennings Houston, and I'm a member of the Broadway Triangle Community Coalition. I'm a teacher and an educator by profession. I grew up in this neighborhood of Williamsburg, and I am a product of NYCHA housing way back when the four block development that I, my parents, and my one sister lived in was called the Williamsburg Projects. Sometime between now and then, it has gone from being referred to as projects to houses, though the structure and the square footage remains the same. My soon-to-be 85-year-old mother still climbs three flights of stairs to that same apartment where I was raised well over 55 plus years ago. With rent, she now pays upward of $1,041.60 a month. And so I ask you all to ponder, 
What's affordable about that? To be specific, my mother has been in the Williamsburg Project since 1958 when I was two. She has lived in her current apartment now since 1960, 57 years to be exact. Affordable, but is this really fair? And if not fair, then is it really affordable? I submit to you the belief that affordable housing, most especially during this time in history when we're seeing 30 years of gains achieved by the Civil Rights Act in the late 60s and the Fair Housing Act of the 1980s eroding rapidly before our eyes in the last 15 to 20 years. Affordable housing must mean fair, and fair must mean equitable. In other words, the opportunity for tenants to acquire uh, equity must be built to our systematic distribution of wealth. And so, to summarize, I leave you with a very short poem that I wrote in 1996 called Projects. They call them Houses, these tiny rectangles, dominoes stacked on all sides, where elevator tombs, shoots like ladders, move crowds in a small place, bodies pressed against squares, and they call them houses, these tiny dungeons, rocketing sky and sun swinging low. Let's get one thing straight. Projects are not houses, but are a cold shoulder turn, robber of a right to attend the land given by God and belonging to no one. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very nice poem. Nancy Wechter, Larry Rothschild. organized by issue. <laughs> okay, I am really tired of being here on these issues. Um, I would like to, s I, I understand the reluctance to overturn a community board decision and a committee decision, but I would say that in this case, the potential impact of a roof bar on a residential neighborhood far outweighs um, anything that is procedural. Um, if you know, I, I sent out a packet of information from Dinapoli, uh, and this is a scourge citywide. There are a number of bar roof bars in this neighborhood in Northside. They hear it in Greenpoint at night. There is no soundproofing, no glass, no glass parapet wall can prevent the sound from going up and filtering out into the neighborhood. Nothing total enclosure. The points I'd like to make are that um, I understand the reluctance, but I also distributed cb 4 guideline, which will not allow bars, but roof bars that abut residences, and they will never approve a bar that isn't more than 10 stories above a residential. Uh, this bar is at the level of residential. Also, I know there is a concern with jobs, but not having a rooftop bar is only, is only going to impact a few jobs. There are other jobs elsewhere in the hotel, and there are no guarantees that these will be given to community members, no enforcement, and no guarantee that these will go to those who really need it, not those who are fashionable. Um, we have a community member who couldn't stay because this went on so late. We had many more people here tonight. And he is a sound artist, very familiar with the way that sound filters into a neighborhood. The developers sent us and the assemblyman a plan for a six foot high glass wall. Now glass, I'm not an architect, but glass does not mix. Well. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, uh, I'm Larry Rothschild, I'm the Director of Workforce Development at Phoenix Alliance, and I'm here to speak against the Visor Development by Rapsky. Um, at, at St. Nick's Alliance, I've been working actively for the last year on the Community Partner Agreement that was in place for the 
state. And as part of the Rheingold Coalition and St. Nick's Alliance, that, that commitment has not been honored. Zero high agreement, 60 people at the Rheingold site. To date, Ratsky has hired zero at that site, but we are actively working on a construction training program that we offer to the community, and the goal was to place people from that training program into successful jobs in the community. Two Trees, with the Domino Project, has honored their community partners agreement, and they've hired 20 people in the first nine months. We placed 56 people with area developers, Heritage Act, Galaxy, Two Trees, and other developers in the area. So we're, we're concerned that, that Rapsky has not met this agreement, and if we're going to move to the visor development that the same issues, same promises are not going to be met. And uh, we want to make sure that the community hears that and that, that we want the developer to recognize those demands. Thank you. Denny Tompkins. Why you please? Boris Santos is next. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Denny Tompkins of the Ben Driggs Avenue. I'm 100 feet from the proposed pot hotel. The pot hotel is going to open this year with proposed five liquor venues. Add that to the 15 we already have makes 20 in a 500 foot radius. The most egregious and blatant assault on the neighborhood and the one we most object to is the open air rooftop bar and event space that can accommodate up to 369 people. This is on the roof of a four story building surrounded by buildings that are taller. This venue offers the neighborhood nothing but a lot of problems in its current open air design. If the, in, if the reasoning for this design is the lack of FAR, to soundproof and enclose it, then the applicant should apply for a variance with the BSA. Or better yet, it should put these venues in one of their 10,000 square foot retail spaces available. But do not burden the neighborhood with another nightly party for people from outside the neighborhood to whoop it up at our expense. There are already plenty of places in the neighborhood to do that. We are not anti-business, we are not prohibitionists, we are people who care about our neighborhood and what ha is happening to it. The choice concerning the rooftop bar and event space is between the people who live here, who have families, who have kids that go to school here, people who have invested in their homes, their community, and their city, or big business who have no ties to the community and are here solely to exploit it. Exploit it, that's what I said. Unfortunately, the community board does not have the final say in this matter, but we want you to support us. We are going to the SLA hearing, and your support will be helpful and symbolic in our pursuit of stopping the open air rooftop bar and event space at the Pod Hotel. Many of the elected officials understand the problems related to oversaturation of liquor licenses, and we thank you for your support. Our state controller, Thomas Napoli, and audit released last Friday. Please summarize. I will. Last Friday said the SLA and New York PD must cook up enforcement on noise complaints. They are up from 38,000 in 2010 to 93,000 in 2015, much of the complaints being generated from bars and nightclubs. I thank the board for the time it spends to make this a better place to live, but we must d all do more to strike a balance between the liveliness of the neighborhood and livability. Thank you. Boris Santos. Boris Santos. Barbara Sliff. Barbara Sliff here? Nope. I don't know if you want to. Okay. Is this on? Hi, um, good evening. My name is Barbara Schliff. Um, I'm an organizer with Southside United Housing. I've been there for over 40 years, and I have a really good idea of the housing problems in Williamsburg. Um, but I'm speaking today as a member of the Broadway Triangle Community Coalition in opposition to Rapsky Group's proposal to develop the Pfizer site located in the Broadway Triangle for the following simple reasons. 
Number one, the development is proposed will continue and accelerate the massive gentrification already happening in our neighborhood. According to the proposal, the development will consist of 1,146 new units, of which only 25 percent will be affordable. This is the minimum required under the mandatory inclusionary housing. This amount is too little based upon the need for, the, for housing in our neighborhood. The 75 percent market rate units will not only be out of reach for residents and families who badly need housing, but will drive up the rents of the surrounding area as has happened in all kinds of developments like this. Number two, the development will perpetuate the segregation and discrimination which the community has been fighting for decades by encouraging a mostly white wealthy population to flood the area with no regard for fair housing practices and ignoring the continuing litigation around the discriminate, discriminatory rezoning of 2009. We strongly believe that accepting a rezoning proposal that does not plan to address these crucial issues must be rejected. Number three, the developer, Brabsky Group, is known as a bad actor. By refusing to honor the commitments of the previous owner of the Rheingold sites in Bushwick and cutting off all communications with the community, they have shown they are only in it for the profits without regard for the impacts their developments will have on the current residents and the surrounding neighborhood. We have to find developers who will show some respect for our community. My last testimony that we, I sincerely hope the community board will take these important factors into consideration before voting. Obviously, not enough people did take these considerations, but we will continue by going to the um, borough president and the, the rest of the procedure. We have to do better for our community. Norma Alveda. Norma? No? Hector Cantillo? Thank you. Sir, I'm the one with that window. If you want to come to my house and see it, I'll take you there right now. And also, I am a Vietnam vet, disabled. I have PTSD. I hardly sleep at night. And with the noise that you're going to bring down, I'll be able to sleep even less. So we don't need you. Thank you. David DeBose. Good evening. I'm David DeBose, a deacon at St. John the Evangelist Lutheran Church that's been across from Williamsburg houses about 175 years. About 60 of those years, we've been a historically black and Latino congregation. We've already lost 50% of our membership to displacement. That's why we're a proud member of the lawsuit in the Broadway Triangle against any more exclusionary affordable housing in our neighborhood. Because we believe the statistics of Brooklyn A that only 20% of the affordable housing in this neighborhood is available to black and Latino and probably Asian folks too. And 80% of it goes to somebody else. And so we shrink and we shrink while others expand. That just isn't fair. So we are very, very concerned with the way this is unfolding tonight. We're concerned that market rate housing, any market rate housing in a place like the Broadway Triangle, which is working class and poor, is going to be gentrification and extermination. Eventually, that gentrification is going to take over that whole triangle. How long, I don't know. But unless we get together soon and fight this kind of market rate housing, we working folks are all done for. Secondly, I would like to know what Community Board One is actually going to do when we're finding out already that maybe Rabsky is not going to hold to his promises. Just to say he promises means nothing. 
because if he kills his workers, if he abuses his workers and offers substandard wages, why are we to believe his promise now that it's going to be okay? What are we going to do to stop that? And finally, I think it's time that the CB1 apologizes to the black and Latino community for voting on behalf of the corrupt development that caused the injunction that proved that there was segregation going on there. And I'm grateful to know that maybe we might have an open process if this development gets for the first Please time. Please summarize. We will know about that lottery for the first time, because we've never, ever heard of any lotteries in the Broadway Triangle for black and Latino folks. Thank you. Rifka Friedman. Rivka Friedman? No. Huh? What? What are you? Did you did you die and become chairman of the board? I mean, well, everything. I don't. I want to go home too. But we need to listen to the people and what they have to say. If you're in such a hurry, maybe you should leave. We're all sitting here. We're all waiting. Thank you so much. I know it's late. I'll make it short. It is about the Metropolitan Pool in Brooklyn on Bedford Avenue that for 10 months we're asking to restore the days and hours that were taken away from us. I'd like to thank Antonio Ronoso for supporting us, for Steve Levin for supporting us, and for the community board members who have voted for us on March 27, 34 against 1. Everybody is in agreement that the pool should be given back to the women hours. I heard a lot about housing and bar and liquor license. What about women's health? We need those pool hours which are now empty. The city is losing $60,000 in membership dues because all the members are not renewing their membership with only one day per week for women swim. We have reached out to every government elected official, council members. I personally spoke to our honorable mayor and he told me into my face. He listened to me and he was very nice about it and he said, there are facts here I was not aware of and I'm gonna look into it. We have been documenting the attendance at the pool the days that were taken away from us is empty. Does this make sense to you? So what is the point of my being here tonight and sitting through a couple of hours and leaving my husband and children at home to eat dinner alone? Is to tell you this. The mayor agrees with us. All the government elect officials agree with us. You all agree with us. So where is the problem? The problem is that nobody is actually telling the parks department, go ahead and return those hours. So I'm asking you all, please write another letter to the mayor and get it to the parks department and let them know all they have to do is return those days to us. Thank you. Thank you. William Hamline. Thank you. Uh, my name is William Hamline. I'm going to keep it short. I'm here to speak in opposition to the proposed rooftop bar at the Pod Hotel. Uh, I lived on the corner of Grand and Driggs when I was born 29 years ago, and I still live there today. Uh, as a resident, as a Brooklyn teacher, as a Brooklyn school leader, I have a strong commitment to the quality of life of the greater Grand Street neighborhood. And I'm also speaking tonight on behalf of my parents, Tom Hamiline and Cynthia Wright, who could not be here tonight because they're out of the country. I'm going to cut my speech short and get to the point. We worry that some board members may feel that this issue has already been resolved and that it is time to move on to new business. We do understand that the community board is very busy. Their meetings go very late. However, when hundreds of community residents, Councilmember Reynoso, Assemblyman Lentol, Senator Delan, and Los Sures all expressed their opposition to this proposal, it is very hard to understand how the community board can find it to be in the public interest and to vote in this application. We ask that you reconsider this matter 
and support the local community by withdrawing your support for the Pod Hotels application to the SLA. Thank you for your time. Esther Weiss. Esther Weiss. That's it. Thank you. That concludes the public hearing. Um, you signed up to speak? I, I, yeah, yeah. What's your name? Um, Come up front, please. You were called before. Four people were with me. Nobody cared it. Well, the board member heard your name. Come, 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 come. Thank you. Are you in support? Um, uh, we I'm here uh, with my landlord. Uh, we're against uh, this building in 177 Huron Street that is has been terrorizing our lives and nothing substantial has been done until now. There is drug activity going on every day, also known as a crack house. There is still a crack house on 177 Huron Street between Manhattan Avenue and McGinnis Boulevard. and. There, there is really nothing that is done. We know that the, the building has been bankrupt and has been, they're trying to give it to a bank now, but this is gonna take forever. So we, we've been in limbo with this. We've, we're at our wit's end. Uh, we're done. There is uh, also hoarding, uh, fire hazard, uh, because of the hoarding, uh, because all the addicts come and live there. There is the shelters in the north side. Uh, they've been, uh, they've been uh, customers in that house very often. Uh, there were more than 123 violations and reports stated on a partable, and that finished in 2015, they stopped writing down more the violations. So there are more violations going on in reports. They have over 60,000 in fines, and still this place hasn't been condemned, and, and people still harass our lives. Nuisance from radio music, nuisance from loitering. Police knows they, they bother us mostly. Uh, uh, stolen bikes, they have more, they had more than 200, uh, 200 bikes in their backyard and in the front. Uh, they had like, 15 bikes. Uh, and we've seen city bikes that have been stolen there. Uh, they did a bust two weeks ago. Uh, somebody had a gun in there. Uh, a year ago, we had somebody with a knife that went out and like trying to do whatever. Uh, and nudity, pest infestations. We constantly have mice and cockroaches. Um, uh, physical altercations with, within the customers. Um, and we just, we're wondering what's happening and we just want the support, we want this to end. Uh, we want the police to finally do something. We want this, this place condemned, uh, shut down and all the residents out except for the ones that it's not their fault and they have to be relocated. Uh, but that's it, please, please do something. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Robert Young. Hello? Yeah, here we go. Uh, I'm Robert Young from Senator Squadron's office. Uh, last month was uh, transportation month for us, um, so I want to talk about a few transportation issues. Um, after after um, the PTA of PS110 in Greenpoint uh, reached out to our office regarding safety concerns around the school, we organized a walkthrough with the Department of Transportation and the PTA. Um, good news from that walkthrough, we're going to get uh, two slow zones created right outside the school, one on, on Monitor and one on Driggs Avenue, um, the two blocks adjacent to the school. Um, they should be in place uh, for the beginning of next year. Um, I want to talk about buses a little bit. So buses in New York City have an average speed of seven miles per hour. Uh, in more congested areas like Midtown and Downtown Brooklyn, it's worse at four miles per hour. Um, 
As a result, bus riders are forced to deal with frequent delays, unreliable service, and long commutes. Um, but it doesn't have to be like this. Uh, there is relatively low cost solutions that can improve service. Um, there's something called transit signal priority. This is, um, uh, it's a way for the buses to communicate with the traffic signals. It's already installed in the traffic signals. Um, all we need to do is the MTA needs to put the hardware in the buses. So this is if a bus is going down the street, it's getting close to the light, uh, it will hold the light as a green light so the bus can make it through. Um, in Chicago, they found that it's reduced bus time, bus, bus travel lengths by 15%. Um, in a priority, all door boarding, um, it's used on uh, S. The um, decreased dwell time by 36%. So these two low-cost solutions really can have an, an improvement in the in um, in our city's bus service. Uh, and Daniel organized his Senate colleagues to urge the governor to move forward with these two with these two items. Um, side of Community Board One, um, the city was the largest construction project uh, in history. It's a two billion dollar rehabilitation of the Brooklyn Queens Expressway from Atlantic Avenue to Sand Street. This is Brooklyn, uh, the BQE triple cantilever uh, in Brooklyn Heights. Um, anyone who's ever driven on the BQE or driven a car inside of New York City will be impacted by this project. Um, there's a way to minimize the impact and save money. procurement called design build. Design build was used on the Kosciuszko Bridge reconstruction project. It is on time and on budget. Doing it, allowing the city to use it on the BQB rehab will save two years off the project um, and $300 million as DOT estimates it. Albany needs to Daniel is pushing legislation for authorization in the next few days as uh, legislative session comes to a close. Um, and lastly, uh, it is Jerry's 40th anniversary here this month. Um, so uh, while Daniel could not be here, he's up in Albany, he did want me to say thank you for your service. Um, thank you. Thank you, Robert. Congratulations, Jerry. I'm glad to know that we did have an elected official that remembered that you've been serving this district for 40 years. Thank you. Uh, announcements that uh, chairperson's report, I just want to make one thing clear, and I really appreciate and thank the people who voted for me tonight. And we cannot continue to duck, conduct business like we're doing. We have board members that come here, they are here at six o'clock and they are here until it closed. We have board members that come in and vote for issues that's only of interest, interest to them. We cannot continue to conduct business like this. So I want every board member, I want every board member to take some time this summer and stop and reflect about your duties on this board. If you do not want to be on this board, if you do not have the time to commit to this board, I would suggest you resign and remove yourself, since we cannot depend on Burl Hall or anybody else to remove you. I would like for you to remove yourself, because we are doing a disservice to the community board members, we're doing a disservice to the community to say that we represent the community and we cannot come here once a month and forget about going to community to our committee meetings. We have got to reevaluate and stop and think why we want to be on this board. Thank you. Pardon me. I, I know that I'm speaking to I know that I'm speaking to the choir, but if our dedicated members would speak to their co-members uh, and let them know that they're not going to sit here every night and while other members come in and, and leave, if it's only something of interest to them, yes. No other board taking the meeting for five hours. Listen, 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 listen. We are about as normal as we can get. <laughs> if, if, 
this is, you know, this is about, we have done everything we can to come up with ideas, to be creative, to make sure we change the time, we change the agenda. We, ch we made a whole lot of changes to make it more easier for people to sit here. I sit here too. I got a husband, I got kids, I, I sit here. So I signed up for this, I signed up for this, and I am dedicated to being here. This is what is normal for Community Board One. If you want a normal board, I suggest you look for another one. Thank you. District manager's report as written, old business. Yes. not take care of the closed Greenpoint Hospital uh, site, and we have uh, homeless living in there now, and squatters and whatnot. I think uh, the community board needs to write another letter uh, to the mayor, and to HPD, um, to allow uh, St. Nick's to get some kind of lease um, to maintain that property properly, and to keep the problems out of it, and also to finally uh, select Breck as the uh, as the preferred developer to finally get some affordable housing on that site. Any other questions on the motion? All in favor? Aye. Against? Abstentions? Motion carried. Community board with right or left? Abstaining? You abstaining? Okay, one abstention. She's abstaining. Right? She's abstaining. Yes. Pardon me? The new member should have been here when he was supposed to be here. And you talk about a normal board? Is that normal? Is that normal when a new board member can't get here on time and you want him to swam, uh, swam in on a new business? Huh? <laughs> We're, we're going to do new business, old business, and then we'll swear the member in. And I would advise him if he ever signed up for another board to be on for time for his first meeting. Uh, old business? Huh? At last month's meeting, we took a vote on the pod hotel. The, the motion change our original vote of approving the liquor license. It, we voted, we thought we voted successfully to return our original vote and deny it. But the borough president, a technicality, overturned us because there were eight abstentions, of which I was one. I didn't know that an abstention counts as a negative. So I'm asking that we take the vote over tonight and all the people who abstained last month change their vote either to yes or no, whichever way you want to go. But we voted up one way or another, yes or no. We voted tonight. And I'm making a motion that we do the motion over again. We vote again. Second by Dell. You're ejecting. Wait, 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 wait. One at a time. Marty. Uh, withdraw our approval or, or, or not deny uh, the uh, application. Right. Thank you, Mark. Yes. Deny the, deny the application for the Pod Hotel. Right. Yes, we do. A motion has been made and second. Let's have a roll call, please. What are we voting for? Yes or what? What's the same? Yes or what? Yes, deny the application. Yes, deny the application. It's the same. It's the same. Deny the application for the roof. Deny the application for the Pod Hotel to rescind the original support vote. If you vote yes, you rescind it. Yes. If you abstain, you're voting no. So if you abstain, you're supporting the continuation of the... Uh, no. of and yes, vote yes, is a no If you vote yes, that's a yes vote. If you vote no, it's a no vote. If you abstain, it gets counted as a no vote. Yes, right. And we might not have a quorum. Yes, 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 y
Uh, right. Yes to deny. That's what it is. Yes. yes. And we might not have a, a quorum. We're going to do a roll call vote. Ladies and gentlemen, a motion? Huh? To approve. We want to rescind that vote. In other words, the, 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 the contractor lied to the community. Okay, we're getting ready for a roll call vote. Please listen for your name, Jerry. What? Gina Argento, Bogdan Bakarowski, Lisa Bamonte, Louis Baricelli, Gina Barros, Moses Bondo, Eric Brazitis, Tom Burrows, Phil Caponegro, Frank Carbone, Stephen Chesler, Michael Chiricella, Teresa Cinciata, Joshua Cohn, Arthur Dibinowski, T. Willis Elkins, Julia Amanda Foster, Samuel Francois, Emily Gallagher, Vincent Gangone, Yo Gross, Sonia Iglesia, Moisha Indig, Bozina Kaminsky, Ryan Coonan, Yo Landau, Marie Lianza, Giorgio Mayer, Aaron McCann, Trina McKeever, Iris Manaya, Toby Moskowitz, Marty Needleman, yes. Simon Neustein, Rabbi Niederman, Karen Nieves, Mario Domrock, yes. Rabbi Perlstein, Janice Peterson, Isaac Sofer, Robert Solano, no. James Stewart, Del Teague, yes. Tommy Torres, Maria Vieta, yes. Stephen Weidberg, yes. Simon Weiser, Tessa Wilson, yes. Lo Yo. Yes. Twenty-one yes, seven no. Motion carried. Is there any other old business? Yeah. New business? Yeah. Uh, if Mr. Yo, Lo Yo would say, I will swear him in. I know. He's already on the board, so it just has to be spent. Yes. Do anything about 177 Huron, the woman that got up and spoke about helping us and when, when I, we can talk about that, let me just swear him in. Repeat after me, please. I solemnly affirm and uphold the Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution of the State of New York. The Charter of New York City and the bylaws of the board, uh, Community Board 1. Thank you so much. Welcome to Community Board 1. Okay, what, what was it that we want? 
Katrina. Hello, uh, can somebody tell me what's going on and what we want to do here? I, apparently we don't do anything about the 177. Yeah, because she has to go first to the... 94th uh, Precinct Community Council. Yeah. But it has to be official complaint from the police department by the... Okay. And then we will take so what some about action. The woman that gave yeah. the is she still here? A regresso. Uh, what is the regresso? Uh, uh, what is that thing? So no, she left. She wanted a letter or to support? She's gone. So what was it? Marty, Marty, what was it? You saw her. She wanted a support. She wanted a letter, a letter of her. Yes, it's a letter of support. Or just a resolution supporting the code. Well, where's Tom? Tom. 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 Mr. Burroughs. So she's going to Tom's committee? Yes. Yes. Go to him. Yes. Okay. Good memory. Oh, she's, she's, uh, Simon. Oh, wait a minute. You're people. We just said it's Canada. Okay. Wait a minute. No, no motion What? No way. Hey, son, you're on the uh, it's very late. I just want to make something very clear on the record. I'd like to commend the, the committee, the, the, the Europe committee, for working so diligently and reproving the, the, all the issues which came up today. I want to make something very clear that history is, uh, as I say, is repeating itself. 80 years ago, Nazi, Nazi Germany, when there, when there was a, a minister of propaganda, they, they were repeating lies and lies and lies. All the issues that were brought up against this developer regarding the were, were, were looked at, were investigated, and they were found to be baseless. So the lies carry on and on and on and on, and, and it was proven by the chair and all the commands that it is baseless. There is no standing to all the issues. Thank you. Good evening. Can we respect this person that's speaking? Is there anybody else that would like to speak? Yes. 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 Um, I would like to speak. Well, okay. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor. Aye. Everybody, everybody have a great summer and happy Father's Day to all the men. Yay, have a great summer.